deserve victory. I deserve victory. I deserve victory. I deserve victory just simply means that no program or student athlete is guaranteed victory, but with the right core values and the right leadership, you can deserve victory. From our standpoint, if you're smart, tough, disciplined, and better conditioned, that's the foundation. Ultimately, the goals plus execution equal outcome. We feel that these eight pillars and that foundation are what's going to support our goals. Choices. Choices protect performance. You are what you repeatedly do. In order to be successful in our program, you have to make great choices. Choices you make on the field, off the field, in class, just been a great young man. Attitude. Attitude sparks performance. If you have a positive attitude, then with weightlifting or anything with school, if you think you're going to do it, you're going to do it. Your attitude really shows what type of man you are and how you deal with adversity. Partnership. Partnerships influence performance. You can't do everything by yourself, you know, especially in football and life. I believe you always got to have someone on your side to get through things, your family, your friends, your coaches. They're always going to be your partner. Gratitude. Gratitude enriches performance. Gratitude is basically showing appreciation, being thankful for what others sacrifice for you. Gratitude is the opposite of entitlement. It's being thankful for what you have will make you work even harder. Team me. Team me means big team and little me. Everyone has a role on the team. Can't beat the drill with selfish people. Can't win with selfish people. It's all about being unselfish and realizing that you're not the only person on the team and the team is bigger than yourself. We're all one. We all need each other in order to be a great team. Passion. Passion energizes performance. I don't think you can do anything worth anything in this life if you don't have passion, you don't have energy. We call it around here at the University of Miami, bringing the juice. Great job! And that's what this program was built on, was passionate players. If you don't have passion, then you don't deserve to be a Miami Hurricane. Preparation. Proper preparation prevents poor performances. At the University of Miami, we try to be the industry leader in terms of preparation. The preparation that we put into each practice, the preparation that we put into each game. Up to the last 48 hours towards the game, we're gonna be preparing for the event. Empowerment. Empowerment means owning your craft. Empowerment frees performance. Empowerment to me means somebody gives you the plan in order to be successful and you take that plan. They don't need to tell you anymore what you have to do. You just go out and do it on your own. Coach Golden has shown us the values of the pillars. That's the backbone of our team. We we'll deserve victory through our hard work. We have an opportunity to deserve victory, to be champions, to be great. And I know each one of you want it as bad as I want it. Remember, no player or coach is guaranteed victory. But with the right core values and the right leadership, you can deserve victory. Choose to deserve victory every day. Hi, I'm Jerry Horowitz. I'm the Director of High School Player Development at the National Football League. I'm excited to be on the campus at the University of Miami. And on behalf of the National Football League and the National Guard, I'd like to thank Coach Golden, his staff, and anyone involved in production of this 2013 High School Player Development tape, which will be distributed to every high school football coach in the country. Coach Golden, thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. And thank you to the NFL, and thank you to the National Guard for giving the University of Miami Hurricanes a wonderful opportunity to share with America and all of its coaches uh, the fundamentals and techniques and drills that we believe in here at the University of Miami and how we teach our players every day. It's vitally important that all of us as instructors and coaches and leaders uh, of young men not only focus on the safety and integrity of the game, but that we also uh, make sure that we are supporting uh, the core values that are represented here in the HSPD. Uh, I think we all understand at some point uh, that we're, we're going to have to retire from the game or that not all of us will make it uh, to the NFL. And it's uh, incumbent on all of us as high school coaches, as coaches in college, and obviously as leaders in the community to produce young men uh, that are equipped and prepared and uh, can meet all the challenges that they'll face in the community and the workforce. I've been involved in uh, the high school player development uh, program since 2001 and the reason why I've been involved is because it's so vitally important uh, to the future of our game to the integrity of our game that we teach fundamentals and that we teach safety and that we always put player safety first the HSPD is more than just teaching X's and O's or techniques and fundamentals it's a way to teach and share core values that align with both the NFL the uh, National Guard and also the University of Miami in terms of uh, producing uh, great young men uh, in the classroom, in the community, and obviously 
uh, on the field of competition. On behalf of the University of Miami Hurricanes and our coaching staff, we hope you and your coaching staff will find the, the instructional drills uh, both uh, enjoyable and useful as you start to train your student athletes in the fundamentals of the game, the safety of the game, and ultimately teaching them core values that will last a lifetime. We hope that in the end that your student athletes will deserve victory. Coach, being down here and seeing your staff put together this video, I'm sure that 2013 will be the best video that has ever been produced. Again, on behalf of the National Football League, the National Guard, Coach Goldman, thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. How you doing? Brennan Carroll, tight ends coach here at University of Miami, also the recruiting coordinator. I uh, hope the drills you guys watch today help keep your kids safe and uh, develop their skills and uh, hope they become uh, better football players. Thank you. Here we go. A little pass pro drill for the tight ends. Uh, working on our kick slide right here. All right. Usually the tight ends aren't asked to uh, pass pro in the games or in practice a whole bunch, but when we do get called on to do it, we need to be great at it. All right. So you may need to find some extra time in individual or uh, after practice to get this work in. Okay. Versus a wide rush, whether it be Nenner or to Sam, all right, we're going to use our kick slide technique. Okay. Uh, it's, the kick slide starts with having all your weight on your inside foot, getting ready to kick out of there. Boom, kick out of there right there, and we're going to slide our inside foot. We want to keep it on the ground as much as possible to give us a good base and uh, give us some, uh, the base will let us uh, throw a good punch right there into, into our defender. All right, as we're kicking back, all right, we want to find a nice aiming point on the defender, strike him right in the middle if we can, all right, and then, uh, and then we're fighting from there, okay? As we're kicking out of there, all right, you got to be careful of lunging too much, all right, we don't want to, we don't want to be too top heavy. All right, we want to be able to uh, to redirect side to side if we need to. Okay, if, uh, if we're getting a straight rush up the field, all right, we got to have a uh, a clock in our heads when uh, when this defender is going to make a move. Obviously, he's not going to run 10 yards up the field. The quarterback's only dropping seven or eight yards. All right, eventually he's going to get get involved and uh, and and attack the quarterback. All right, if he goes if he goes over top, all right, somewhere in there we're going to need to turn our hips and, and press him by. Okay, but we don't want to do that too early and give up the inside lane. Right now, we got to work on uh, work on the outside moves as well as the as uh, as an inside move by our by our rush right there. So as we kick back, we got to be ready to put that outside foot in the ground and redirect and uh, and push inside now and keep it from getting an inside lane on us right here, all right? So as our defenders press up the field and works back inside, all right, we're able to push off our outside foot and redirect inside and now pick up the inside move right there. Now here's a shot of it in the game. All right, we get the sandbacker coming up on the ball, blitzing outside, kick back, nice punch inside, lock him at the line, uh, just past the line of scrimmage, and we're able to get a big play off of it. Take a look from the end zone right here. All right, it's great recognition that the sandbacker comes on down. We know how to redirect. We're making our calls. All right, he tries, the sandbacker tries to give us an inside move right there. We're able to redirect. All right, lock him up and uh, give the quarterback enough time to make the throw. All right, that's uh, working on our kick slide and uh, tight end pass protection. Okay, here we go. We're talking about the tight end hook route. All right, we're going to have the tight ends release up the field eight yards, look inside, all right, and catch the football. Uh, all we're trying to do is find a nice soft spot in the zone, all right, and give the quarterback a nice easy target. All right, coaching points on this route. We're going to have our guys take a seam release, which is a nice wide release like we're going up the seam. All right, we want to press vertical, press for width, and we want to make the defense think we're going uh, we're going up top. All right, at the top of your route, we're having our guys pump around, boom, set on down, turn, catch the ball, and transition. All right, we're going to have our guys hook inside uh, to get their eyes on the quarterback even faster. All right, now if we get, uh, we get some man-to-man -man coverage or we get the defender jump out on us real quick, all right, uh, we have the adjustment to break out on this route. Okay, so if we get man coverage or the linebacker decides to jump us, we're going to break out. The quarterback's well aware, and we're, uh, and we're getting our tight ends the ball. Okay, the tight ends the first read on this route. All right, it comes off a compliment uh, of a post coming from the outside receiver to high load the defense. All right, so if the uh, tight end's covered up, all right, the quarterback's got the option to throw the post over top. All right, here's a look at it, here's a look at it in practice. All right, with the tight end release and vertical. All right, find the soft spot in the zone. Nice ball by the quarterback, catch the ball transition, and we're good to go. 
All right, here's a shot in the game of us uh, throwing the post. All right, and uh, here's a tight end pressing vertical. The post coming from the outside, tight end finds a nice hole in the zone. All right, we pause it right there, and we see the tight end's open and the post is open. Quarterback throws the post. Good idea right there. Okay, that's the, uh, that's the hook route for the tight ends. Okay, here's our sideline drill. We use this drill to teach our tight ends to use their weapons, uh, either dropping their shoulder, using the stiff arm, or jumping over a defender. We need to get bag set up at 5, 10, and 15 yards uh, with another player holding the bag um, and getting ready to initiate contact. The, uh, the first defender, all right, is going to, uh, is going to hit, our, hit our tight end. All right, the tight end's got to drop his shoulder on the first guy. Okay, use the stiff arm on the second defender. Okay, and be ready to jump over a bag on the third one. Okay. So our first defender, take a swipe at him. The second one, give a target for the stiff arm. And a third player needs to put the uh, bag on the ground, get our tight end to jump over it. The whole time, okay, we're teaching the tight end to, uh, to keep the ball high and tight, okay, get ready for contact, okay, and get up if he's got to at the end right there. All right, you want to dip that shoulder, keep the ball high and tight, use a stiff arm, and finish through the end zone. Okay, here's... Uh, Here's a good look at it. One of our practices right there, a tight end gets the ball in the flat um, after running a crossing route. He gets the shoulders vertical, all right, initiates contact right there. It's always fun to have the tight end, boom, get a nice shot on the defense right there. It's a good finish, all right, it's a way to be violent on the sideline. That's our sideline drill. Here we go. We're talking about the tight end release right now. Okay, anytime we get a sandbacker on the line of scrimmage, he's going to try to hold you there. He's going to put his hands on you and not let you get downfield on your route. So we're going to use two different release techniques. The first one is a rip technique, which is an arm under. The second one will be a swim technique, which is an arm over. Okay, here's the first one. Here's a rip technique. Uh, we want to widen this defender and use, his, uh, and use his outside leverage against him. So we're going to step at his outside to get him to get a little bit wider. All right, and then the next action we're going to do is we're going to bring our club arm, which is our inside arm, and attack that elbow. Okay, first we're going to widen him out, and then we're going to attack with the inside arm, try to get a piece of that elbow, all right, to get him to widen even further to get us a nice inside release right here. Okay, we're going to attack the elbow, and then we're going to bring our arm and bring our arm underneath in a ripping motion right there, rip through there. It's got to be quick. It's got to be violent. Okay, and that'll get you out on your route right there. Boom. As you get downfield, obviously you want to look back for the football. Now, we're going to use the swim technique here. It's going to come off the exact same motion. We're going to step with our outside foot uh, to get the backer to widen, bring the club arm to the elbow, attack that elbow, okay, and then bring the arm over as fast as you can over the top. Okay, bring your elbow back down as you get through there, just in case he holds on to you. Okay, to knock that arm off. Okay, and these are two techniques we teach. Okay, here's our uh, distraction drill we use for our tight ends. We want to set them up about 10 yards away. We're going to have our uh, defenders at 7 or 8. Uh, use two or three guys. Uh, we want to obviously distract the tight end from catching the ball. Um, we want our tight ends to remain focused on, uh, on securing the catch as we're running through the zones right there. All right, the tight end's got to keep his eye on the ball. We want to see the ball into his hands, tuck the ball away high and tight, uh, and remain focused on the throw. And don't get distracted by the defenders right there. Okay, this is our distraction drill. There we go. Here we go. Our tight end cut circuit. Uh, we do this anytime we want to practice our cuts on the back side of our outside zone run game or any tosses going away from us. We love cutting the defenders. Um, they hate it, so uh, we're going to keep doing it. Um, the, uh, the first step we need to take uh, has got to put us in lead position so the angle can be as flat or as wide as it needs to be uh, to get our head across of our defender. Okay, we always want to take three steps before we cut. We always want to get our defense running. We want to get those guys going sideline to sideline. It makes them easier to cut. It makes your job a little bit easier. Okay, so as we're getting to our third step, all right, we want to uh, aim at the outside thigh board of our defender right there. Okay, and we're going to rip through with our inside arm. Okay, that's the aiming point. Um, you always want to see what you cut, so we got to have our eyes up. Our uh, 
our tight ends got to have their eyes up, and you don't want to duck your head. You always want to keep your eyes open. Some guys have a tendency to close their eyes a little bit. Okay, you want to uh, take a shot. You want to land on your chest, just like these guys are doing right here. You don't want to belly flop. Okay, uh, you want to explode through the defender's uh, thigh pad right there. Okay, that's uh, this is for cuts on the line of scrimmage. All right, uh, we'll get to the second level cuts here now. Our aiming point is just going to be a little bit wider, obviously, because our, uh, we're a little bit farther away from the line of scrimmage. All right, we're still got to take a nice course to get to our defender, so it's got to be a uh, it's got to be nice wide course. All right, and your aiming point remains the same. You want to press wide, nice flat course right there, and get to the uh, and get to that outside thigh board. Okay, here we go. Here's uh, here's a good shot of it in the game. All right, we've got two cuts coming up here. We got one in the second level, one in the backside by the tight end. Okay, here we go. Check out this one right here. Take a nice flat step. Boom, three steps and cut. Get your defender on the ground. Okay, that's a good first level cut. Now our second level cut's coming from right here. We're on the second level. Boom, throwing at the thigh board, getting our defenders on the ground. All right, as we see it happens here, these guys are on the ground. They're basically out of the play. All right, when we're erasing a man, taking them out of the play. All right, it's giving our, uh, our skill position guys uh, chance to, get, to gain more yards. Take a look from the end zone right here. Get a good cut, getting our defenders on the ground, taking them out of the play. That's what we're doing our tight end cut circuit. Here we go, talking about the stick route. We're going to incorporate some cones into this drill. Uh, to make sure our, we're running precise routes. It's a five yard outbreaking route. All right, so we're gonna have our first cone just past this line, okay? And our second cone just below the line. We want our tight ends to come back downhill ever so slightly to eliminate the intercept angle of the linebacker. Now, once we catch this ball, we gotta transition, get upfield as quick as we can. All right, we can get a lot more yards than five on these, uh, on these routes. All right, we're trying to catch the ball, break that tackle and get going. Gotta be high and tight when you catch the football. All right. Take a look here. Here's some uh, here's some action from practice. We're pressing vertical right there. Asante's breaking it out, coming back downhill ever so slightly, catching that ball and uh, transitioning up the field and getting us a big gain right there. All right. Here we go live in the game. All right. We don't have a defender uh, on top of us, so we're just going to press vertical, break it out at five yards, get ready to catch the ball, and then we got to transition, break a tackle. Let's go. Got to finish in the end zone. Excellent. Now enjoy it with your teammates. Have some fun. All right, that's our stick route right there. All right, here we go. We call this drill drop, step, and dunk. This is a, uh, a drill to get the tight ends to transition from uh, a stop position uh, and get them going down the field again. Um, this is just like in basketball. If you're in the low post, um, you're catching the ball, and you want to get to the basket as fast as you can. You use your drop step, all right, and, uh, and you want to go right to the rack and dunk that ball home. Okay, similar similar idea for the tight ends. We're in a stop position right here. Okay, we want to drop our step just like we would uh, in the in the paint, and uh, and head towards the end zone in our case. Okay, so right now we're gaining yards once we catch this ball. Okay, we get we're coming to a stop stop position. We're going to drop step with whatever side the ball is thrown to us. Okay, if the ball is thrown to the right shoulder, we're going to drop step with the right foot. If it's thrown to the left shoulder, we'll drop step with the left foot and get us going to the end zone as fast as we can. Right here it is with the pads on. Right, we want to come across the field, and make it look like we're going uh, on a shallow route. We're coming to a stop position right here. Okay, obviously we want to catch. Make sure you ensure the catch right there. Boom, and use our drop step right there. Drop step, and you want to get us going towards the end zone as fast as we can. All right. A lot of times uh, receivers will want to catch the ball and go sideline to sideline. All right, it takes forever to get going to gain yards. We're gaining yards right now on the drop step and dunk technique. We want to transition from a stop to a start. Um, here it is again. Boom. You want to aim that foot directly at the end zone. You want to be get going to the end zone as fast as you can. Okay, you want to gain yards as quick as you can. All right, we want to come under control. Use your arms to slow your motion down right there. Sink your hips. Get ready to catch the ball and, and, uh, and open your hips up. Point that foot at the end zone and get going. Okay, here we go. We're uh, we're playing K State here. We want a great example of uh, the drop step and dunk technique. Um, we're going to look at the wing tight end 
as he releases off the ball, he's going to run a, a five-yard route, uh, come to a stop, and then transition and go. We want to get going as fast as we can, all right, and uh, hopefully we can get uh, get some more plays like this. But uh, the important thing is uh, once he comes to a stop, he's able to uh, catch the ball, look it in, and uh, get going as fast as he can. You want to get up the field and start gaining yards. Don't want to run to the sidelines. Uh, you want to aim at the end zone as fast as you can. Uh, and there's an example of a uh, drop step and dunk technique. I don't know what happened. Did you get the button? Blinking button. Blinking button. If they hit it again? I think so. Stop it. Okay, here we go. Talking about man blocks. Talking about blocking the guy head up across from us. All right, that defensive end. Okay, we want to use inside footwork whenever we're blocking the end uh, inside of us. We get our hands aside and try to press our defender off the ball. All right, that first step has got to take us inside now. We want to get square up on our defender and press him vertically. Okay, we may get help from the tackles as they get off to their defender. Okay, but we're going to step always like we're going to block that guy all by ourselves. So we're going to have no help. If we get help, it's just bonus for us. Okay, we want to keep our hips low. Right, we want to make sure that our feet aren't crossing over. All right, or we don't get too wide. Okay, we want to keep our base nice and wide. Okay, our hips low. Press that defender vertically. Good, just like that. All right, we're gonna step far inside as we have to. Okay, to make sure that we're getting getting uh, square up on our defender. Now we can lose our tackle like we do here early. All right, now we just gotta battle it out. All right, here's a good look at uh, a man block. We've got our tight end on the left here. We're running power right at him. Uh, tight end needs to get a great inside step, get his hands inside. Also, get uh, we want this hat placement on the inside of the defender, inside leverage. Uh, and then we got to press like crazy and get our defender off of us and, uh, and create a hole right there. All right, you get a good look here. You see the first step, right? You see the hands inside, all right? And we've got good hat, hat placement right there. Um, in this look right here, uh, we've got a good deuce by the guard and tackle, um, and, the, uh, and the defender is, is uh, getting caught up with the tight end, so he can't get off that block and make the play. It's a good example of a man block from the uh, tight end. Here we go, talking about zone blocks. At the University of Miami, we run both outside and inside zone. All right, we'll talk about outside zone first. All right, we're going to work our combinations. On all of our zone plays, our tackle and tight end are responsible for the defensive end and the Sam linebacker right here. Okay, uh, versus a wide nine technique like we got here, we teach the tight end that the combination is probably going to happen pretty quick, and you're going to wind up being man to man on the end, and the tackle is going to wind up on the sand. All right, so we're going to tack this outside shoulder here and lock our inside arm. Our zone step is going to take us right on his outside shoulder right there. You step to his outside shoulder. Now, once you get locked in there, all right, you're pressing your defender vertically off the line of scrimmage. You want to cover him up to give the back a two-way read. All right, now, if we get a head-up defensive end and the sandbacker is stacked, all right, this combination, we're probably going to have to hang on a little bit longer. So the tight end, we teach him to attack through the outside shoulder of the defensive end to give time uh, to the tackle to pull and get out there. All right, we want to hang on this block as long as we possibly can. We don't want to come off until the very, uh, very, very end right there. Now you want to cover up that sandbacker and press him off the line of scrimmage, or press him off the, his, his movement right there. All right, here it is on the right side. We're attacking, the, attacking through the outside shoulder to get to the second level to attack that sandbacker. All right, now we want to cover him up as well. Okay, on the back side of our outside and our inside zone, all right, we want to step and get our head across first. All right, outside zone, we're going to step, get our head across, and cut our defender right there. All right, take a look at the cutting circuit, all right, to see how we're doing it live. But our footwork right here takes us to a point where we can get our head across all right, we're going to run, take three steps before we cut now. We want to get these defenders running with us so they're more susceptible to getting cut. Okay, on the back side of inside zone, we step, get our head across, and now we press our defender. All right, here we go. We've got our, our outside zone concept. Uh, this is a good look. we got both tight ends. Uh, outside on the front side, we're going to work the triple. Triple here on the left, uh, we're going to run uh, 19 strong. And uh, on the back side, we've got a uh, three-step cut and climb technique, backside pull technique by our, uh, our tight end on the right here. Um, looking at the tight end on the front, on the front side of this play, we're going to 
We're going to block through the uh, defensive end's outside shoulder, working up to the outside linebacker on the second level. Right, we want to cover these guys up. Uh, we want to give the, always give the back a two-way go. Um, and uh, over here on the back side, we're going to get a great three-step cut and climb technique right there. We cut our defender. Nice little roll at the end. Um, and on both sides of this play, we're doing a pretty good job uh, executing our assignments. We've got a good triple on the front side. Uh, with a tight end working up to the, the outside backer and the uh, backside tight end getting a nice cut. There's a good look at the uh, the outside zone. Here we go, take a look at the uh, the inside zone play. Uh, we Our right tight end on the front side has got out technique, so he's going to work out to the uh, to the corner there. All right, he's going to uh, he's gonna block number 17, uh, attack his outside shoulder, all right, uh, and, then, uh, and then cover him up. The, uh, the backside tight end on the left here has got to have a great first step, get his hat inside, hands inside, all right, and uh, give the running back the opportunity to go inside his block or outside of his block. If it gets washed down like this, he's going to cut back most times, all right, and uh, he's able to cut back and uh, get in the end zone right there. So that's a good look at it. Take a look from the back end. The, uh, the front side tight end um, uh, is responsible for the uh, – that corner who we're going to uh, denote as the Sam. The tackle will take the, the end number 66 and the uh, backside tight end is going to be uh, manned up on number 96 right there. Um, he's going to be our responsibility. So it's a great first step. All right. Now if the end wants to wash down inside, he's going to give the back a, a huge cutback lane and we're able to get in the end zone. Okay, so that's a good look at the, uh, the zone blocks right there. The purpose of the uh, tight weave drill is to really help the running back make cuts in a uh, in a confined area. Uh, it really helps him build up torque on his ankle uh, and also strengthens his ankle and helps him maintain balance. As we see the setup of the drill, uh, you got the running back working in confined spaces. He wants to keep the ball high and tight, protect the football, and he really wants to try to not really touch any bags and be as elusive as possible in this confined area here um, You know, as we go through this uh, drill. You can see the setup. You know, you can use all pop-ups, you can use all cones, uh, with it, whichever is best for you. As we go to the game application, you can see right here, okay, uh, a lead outside zone here where the running back cuts it up, and he's really making these cuts in the confined area, excellent balance, and really getting the torque on his ankles that we talked about, all right? Look at his hips, always on balance and under control, all right? Being able to make defenders miss and get extra yardage right there. The purpose of the high-speed weed drill is to uh, make defenders miss in open field uh, without little reduction of uh, speed or deceleration. As you see the setup here, uh, we have three pop-up dummies uh, five yards apart. Uh, the back wants to get, get a uh, five-yard running start, and he also wants to finish five yards uh, beyond the last pop-up dummy. Uh, so it's really a 25-yard drill. Uh, you can set the drill close to the sideline. You also can set it uh, in the middle of the field. Right? The choice is yours. All right, you also need a good athlete with the football uh, to execute this drill. All right, wants to, what the back wants to do, he wants to accelerate here, keeping the ball high and tight. He wants to weave inside and then back outside, okay, away from the defenders. You, know, you want to execute this drill without touching any bags, all right, in order to uh, change the defender's tackling angle, all right, and break the tackle, all right, and make big plays here. As we look at the game application here, you can see the back on the lead outside zone here, open field. There's the high speed weave, great acceleration here. All right, putting the ball in the end zone for a big play. As always, when you watch this from the end zone, okay, you can see uh, you can see his plan. Okay, how he sets the defender up here in open field. There's the weave, making a miss. Excellent acceleration here. All right. And again, you know, creating big plays and putting the ball in the end zone for six. All right, that's the high-speed weave drill. The quick feet drill is a must in terms of teaching your running backs how to change direction and fire their feet quickly. Here you can see the setup of the drill. We work with about six cones. All right, we use three commands. The first command we want to use here, all right, is just a weave in and out, all right, straight ahead, firing our feet as quickly as possible. We don't want to hit any cones. Right here, we modify into a uh, sideways, work on our lateral quickness. Again, you don't want to hit any cones. All right, in the third command, we want to work all the way in between the cones, inside and out, all right, in order to maintain balance. And again, 
no one hits a cone all right excellent drill to work on foot quickness as we uh, switch over to the game application here you can see where the running back does an excellent job here of uh with his defender in open field quick fire another feet and a lateral cut basically doesn't stand a chance in open field all right once this is done at full speed and uh and it's done quickly once again take a look from the end zone Boom, boom, right there, quick fire, another feet. Uh, very little reduction in speed, getting the ball in the end zone, all right? That's our quick feet drill. The flow of the power pass has been around for a long, long time. Uh, as we drill it here in practice, uh, the key coaching points is uh, obviously speed. Uh, the fullback, what he wants to do, he wants to hug it tight, uh, show the illusion to run, and sneak out in the flat and catch the ball and turn it up the field, all right? We work it both ways here. He must snap his head around as soon as he clears the defender. All right, secure the catch uh, and get it up the field. We work it to the right and left. Same thing as soon as he clears, snap it, secure the ball, getting the ball up the field. All right, this play is a, a great play in short yardage situation when people think you're going to run the football. Here we're executing it here. Excellent catch. All right, getting the ball up the field. All right, staying in bounds, okay, and uh, and then getting the first down on this play right here. End zone copy shows right here, hug it tight, okay. Excellent job again, opening your hips, breaking the tackle, staying in bounds, all right, getting the yards after contact here uh, on the flow and power pass. The choice route is very similar to a bopper route. The only difference is we want to take an outside release instead of releasing through the line of scrimmage. Uh, you still want to run this route at a depth of five yards uh, versus zone. We want to sit down all right, in the voided area versus matchup man. We want to work off the linebacker's leverage. OK, if he's playing as inside leverage, obviously we want to break out. OK, if he's playing as outside leverage all right, and there's too high, we want to take what we call a grand slam. OK. Uh, but here we're going to focus on man or zone um, in terms of uh, uh, the linebacker playing as inside leverage also. Okay, as we take a look at the clips here, you see the running back takes the outside release, the linebacker drops off. Okay, in zone, so he just sits it down. Here we get matchup man here, so he breaks out, catches the ball, and turn it turns the uh, the catch up the field. All right, as we look at a uh, full team-like situation here, the running back takes a circle release, all right? He feels like the running, the uh, linebacker is matched up with him, all right? He breaks out, catches the ball, and turns it up the field on a choice route. The bopper routes are one of those routes, uh, if executed properly, no matter what the linebacker does, he's definitely wrong. Uh, here we want to take a release through the line of scrimmage. All right, we want to push to a depth of five yards. We want to break to the right or left based on the linebacker's leverage. All right, if the linebacker was to drop into the zone coverage, all right, we would just sit it down right over our alignment, catch the ball, and get it up the field. Here, we're working versus matchup here. All right, if the linebacker tries to collision, all right, you want to uh, avoid the collision and reset the vertical stem and still break at a depth of five yards as you saw right here in those two clips. All right, here as we go to a game, all right, You'll see that the tailback takes a release uh, through the line of scrimmage here. You got to be aware of any line stunts. All right, you don't want to get caught up. All right, uh, the uh, coverage lifts off. He catches the ball at a depth of five yards, and uh, he executed a technique what we call uh, the drop and dunk, uh, as we had talked about. Uh, you know when we discussed the check down, uh, and he really you know, got the ball up the field and got about eight or nine yards on a simple bopper route. Flare routes are simple routes that if left unchecked and you get the defense outflanked, it could turn into a big play. All right, from an alignment of five yards deep, we want to flare. Our aiming point is the top of the numbers where we want to turn this uh, this route up. Okay, from a, a depth of five yards in the gun alignment, we want to lose about a yard to six. All right, get our shoulders turned around. All right, catch the ball and turn it upfield. All right. We want to take about five hard steps, catch it, secure the ball, get up the field. All right. Three steps, uh, if really to the short side of the field, we want to get our head around quickly, catch the ball, and advance it up the field. Okay. 
here we look at a game clip right here you can see where the running back flares back to about six yards gets the defense out flank cuts it up all right and he creates what we call an x play on a simple flare route out of the backfield as we look at it again you can see there's no flat coverage he gets you know caught up with the crosser excellent job by the tailback okay catching it and cutting it up and getting the ball north and south all right on the flare route the check down is a highly underrated and highly uh underutilized route uh it normally it catches the defense off uh off guard for the simple fact that when coverage lifts off all right, and the running back is hanging out in the backfield and he leaks out. All right, he's sometime wide open and he can catch the ball and uh, run for a first down. All right, we, what we want to do is we want to get to a depth of five yards, if at all possible, based on the timing of the play and how protection works out. All right, here, okay, uh, we see the game application here where we want to catch the check down. All right, and execute a drop and dunk technique as far as getting the ball up the field as quickly as possible. And transitioning, all right, into uh, running the football north and south and trying to get a first down. All right, our philosophy is we want to turn check downs into first downs. All right, here you can see a great look at the end zone, uh, really getting that ball upfield and getting, uh, you know, around about 10 yards on a simple check down. The feed and fit drill is one of those base blocking drills that really helps the running back in terms of getting his feet, hands, eyes all working together in unison. All right, being able to see what you hit is very important. All right, it also helps you gain striking distance in terms of getting close to a defender and not overextending and always staying on balance. All right, maintaining balance is very important in this drill. All right, we want to move our feet quickly back and forth. All right, keeping our elbows down punching upwards and staying on balance once again as we strike these defenders, all right? It also signifies a running back uh, picking up a blitz as a linebacker is blitzing, uh, you know, through a, a gap, all right? And you can see the type of technique he wants to use uh, in terms of fitting these guys up, all right, and moving his feet back and forth, all right, the block movement. All right, let's take a look at a couple uh, reps here. As you see here, the running back has his elbow down, good upward strike, moving his feet back and forth. Okay. Again, we take another look. All right, real basic drill. Okay. Eyes are up, elbows down, keeping your feet live, being able to block movement. All right. That's our feet and fit drill. The backside cutoff block is a block that is executed on the backside of an inside zone or a sprint protection away. Uh, it is used to open up the running lane uh, for a running back uh, so he can take the backside cut uh, versus the inside zone uh, or a running inside zone. Here, as you look at the setup here, you have a defender signified in the crash of the defensive end. He's holding the shield uh, in order to take on that contact. All right, the technique that the uh, blocker wants to use here, he wants to uh, win inside at all costs. He wants to keep his head, head inside at all costs. And the one thing it does is it starts with his course. All right, he must take a course to where the defender will be located, not where he's pre-aligned. Right, as we look at the clip here, all right, you can come out of three-point stands, a two-point stands, excellent takeoff, getting his head inside, winning inside, and once he gains control, he turns uh, on the defender, keeping him from crashing down and opening up that, uh, that backside running lane here. Here, as we look at the end zone copy, all right, the, the, the uh, fullback is almost going to take a course straight ahead and went inside and turned and opened up that backside running lane for the tailback and gained extra yardage here. You can run it also run it out of the gun. All right, you still want to take the same mindset. Uh, run where the defender will be located. All right, winning inside. All right, straining. All right, keeping that defender outside. All right, for the backside uh, running lane again to open up. Okay, uh, on this backside cutoff. Excellent job, excellent contact, straining, winning inside right here. Okay, backside cutoff block. From a running back standpoint, the first drill we'll do in teaching the progression of drive blocking, all right, is called the base block. Here, as you look at the setup, all right, you can use one or two agiles. Here we have one, all right, you have a player with the shield, 
Okay, straddling the bag, he must stay low in order to maintain a good base and give the blocker some resistance. All right, the technique, hat, hand, and feet must work together. All right, the running back must use uh, his power leg. His lead leg is always his power leg. Now, during the drill, you want to alternate legs, all right? You want to get work on the right leg. You want to get work on the left leg, all right? His feet uh, should stay shoulder width apart, all right, to maintain a good power base, and he wants to use short, choppy steps in order to drive this defender back. As we look at the drill here, power legs, the right leg, good snap, hat and hands working together. Here, the power leg is the left leg. Boom, good snap, short choppy steps, running that defender down the bag. As we look at the game application here, here we have a weak side uh, lead zone here. Excellent contact by the fullback, latching on, keeping his feet shoulder width apart, running that linebacker straight down uh, the hash as you saw there. We'll get an end zone copy, look at the excitement. Here, good contact. Running his feet, staying engaged on the block, all right, in order for the running back to make uh, an excellent play and a big play and score a touchdown. The perimeter weapons transitional drill is one of those deadly drills, all right, in which the running back is trying to get the ball to the corner and down the sideline for a touchdown. The last thing defenses want is that ball to get outside and down the sideline. All right, here we're working the outside zone. The weapon of choice that we want to use here is a violent stiff arm. All right, we're going to get two reps at this in a row in order to, uh, you know, become more effective at this play. Here the running backs takes the handoff, all right, two violent straight arms in a row. All right, you get another look at it right here. Okay, work on the outside zone. One, two in a row, stand and bounce, all right, to get as much yards as possible. Make sure we're working this drill both ways, all right? The right hand and left hand to get equal balance. Here we go to a game clip. Same thing, working the outside zone as we talked about. Running back does an excellent job, okay? A transition here, all right? Two straight arms in a row in order to free himself up and get that ball outside and down the sideline. Once again, as we go to the end zone, you'll be able to see here's the outside zone. All right, excellent cut up right here. Good trick switch. One, two. All right, weapons as you saw in the drill. All right, look at this kid run. All right, excellent play. This weapon transitional drill is one of my all-time favorites. If you watch this drill extremely close, as I know you will, you'll see that the running back uses three weapons of choice in terms of the shoulder block, an elusive cutback, and he finishes the drill with a stiff arm. All right, it's a 25-yard drill. You have three pop-up dummies spaced out at about five yards apart. All right, as we watch the drill here, shoulder drop, elusive cutback, finishes up with a stiff arm. We work the drill both ways, shoulder drop. Same cutback, finishing drill up, the drill up with a stiff arm here. All right, as we go to the game application, here at the University of Miami, we have a rule where we never run out of bounds, all right? We get forced out of bounds or we break tackles for touchdowns here. Boom, good run by the tailback here on the lead outside zone. All right, as you watch this from the end zone, you can really see he's presented with a choice, all right? And uh, he stays in bounds right here and really drops his shoulder, all right, on the defender. Uh, getting about two extra yards, all right? That's our weapon transitional drill. The first level read and react drill is really designed to teach the running back how to make defenders miss on that first level, right, and get the ball north and south. The drill is set up in tight quarters on purpose in order to make it more difficult, all right, so these cuts are easier on game day. As we take a look at the drill, the running backs are given visual cues by the coaches here in terms of using pop-up dummies. They want to keep the ball high and tight, try to maintain their speed, and have very little wasted motion, all right, in terms of uh, making these cuts and getting the ball north and south. As we look at the game application here, all right, we can take it to the end zone copy. It always uh, serve as the better view. The linebacker here is basically uh, will be unabated to the tailback here and unblocked. 
the tailback is forced to make that cut okay on the first level here getting the ball north and south all right creating big plays uh, also what we call x plays okay for the offense all right um, that's your first level read and react drill from a running back standpoint as we look to evolve as better blockers all right the uh, react and explode drill is one of those drills that's a must all right you have to do this drill okay as you look at the configuration here you have uh, two players with shields all right what they're going to do they're going to give the blocker uh, a visual cue in terms of rushing him and he has to react off these guys all right and apply all those techniques that we talked about earlier all right hat hands feet eyes and even right now we're incorporating the hips all right into this drill okay he wants to strike the defender using these good techniques all right he wants to retreat all right and once again he's waiting for a visual cue all right before he attacks the defender again all right let's take a look at this drill gotta get his feet live right here good good explosion right here all right getting the visual cue attacking hat hands feet all right boom excellent job excellent punch excellent finish right here as we look at the game application you can see here we're kind of uh in a backed up situation the excellent time to blitz okay we get the blitz all right excellent job by the fullback here uh reacting to the defender rushing here uh and you can you can see uh as we uh take this drill to the field you can really see him react all right and explode on his defender okay boom using the technique uh that we talked about being able to uh give the quarterback time to throw the ball down the field okay that's our react and explode drill the perimeter read and react drill is one of those drills that you have to do all right it really teaches the running back uh, in terms of whether he wants to take the corner all right or cut it up once he sees that the force all right has either contained or given up contained here we work this drill It's a simple drill to set up all you pretty much need is a, a coach and a pop-up dummy uh, letting these guys get as close as possible and making them react whether they're going to uh, take the ball outside or cut it up either way okay once the choice is made you got to get the ball north and south and make big plays here all right as we look at the game application here we're going to run an outside zone the running back does an excellent job of sucking the defender inside all right and making that cut okay as you saw in the drill all right and getting this ball in the end zone right here good job right there okay running through contact okay getting the ball in the end zone once the defender gave up contain all right that's our read and react perimeter cut drill how you doing? I'm George McDonald, wide receivers coach here at the University of Miami. I hope these drills can help your team and your players become more successful and dynamic on the football field. Thank you very much. First thing we like to talk about is a stance and start. The stance is a very critical part of the, the offensive play. At Miami, we like to play fast, so it all begins with our stance. The initial stance that we'll teach is a two-point aggressive stance with our outside foot back, inside foot up. We want our feet underneath our armpits and a staggered aggressive stance. We like to have our players have their nose over their front knee so they have a slight bend. We also ask them to protect their chest with the numbers up. So here you can see our guys nose over toes, slight bend in the foot, hands up. And the key thing on this drill is that you want to go on ball command. You don't want to go on verbal command because most times a receiver is not going to be able to hear the, the uh, snap count during the game. So as you see, as they drive off the ball, you want to limit as much false stepping as you can. You want them to push off with weight on their front foot, driving forward. Right here, you can see that the, the receiver has his hands up, protecting them. We try to get it consistent, have their hands up versus press and off coverage. That way, if the defense changes, their mentality won't change. You can see that the receiver's front toe is loaded, his back foot is in the ground, and he's ready to drive off. Remember, we want to limit as much false stepping as possible. Here, same thing. Our guys have a good balanced stance, split vision, and they're driving off the ball. Here's some good game clips of what we're trying to get done. So a receiver down here at the bottom, he gets in his aggressive stance. And the key thing that we try to tell our guys is we want to drive with speed. We want to close the cushion on the DB and really threaten them with our vertical 
speed. Everything we do on our offense is based off the go route. So here's a great picture of the receiver driving off the ball, closing the cushion on the DB, and running through the catch. Another great example is down here at the bottom with the, the circle player here. The biggest thing as the receiver, you want to get the DB to get out of his comfort zone, meaning the DB wants to try to strain to stay in his back pedal. If we can get on him and attack him with our speed and get him to open up, now we control the route. So you can see the receiver's driving off the ball. He gets the DB to open up his hips. Now we're able to get out of our break easy and have time to catch the ball and get the ball up the field. Here's a great example of practice. Sometimes you can't get the DB to get out of his back pedal, but you can close the cushion. So our receiver drives off the ball. We want to minimize the false step. He gets into the DB's comfort zone. Now he has to open his hips, and as he opens his hips, he's able to drive out of the break, causing the DB to stumble because he's already out of his comfort zone. Now the receiver is able to get the ball up quickly. So that's why it's critical as you do stance and start that you have the receivers pushing off the ball and playing with speed. The drill I'd like to talk to you now about is a quick hands and counter drill. This is used with our speed release and it teaches the receivers to explode off the ball but also identify the hands of the defender to get them down quickly. As stated earlier, the number one thing that a receiver can use versus press coverage is his speed release. He has to be able to attack the defender with speed, get his hips open, and create a, a vertical line. The one thing we will teach our receivers is to work an aiming point, not the middle of the man, so we'll try to aim one yard outside or one yard inside the defender's shoulders to create leverage as we run off the ball. When doing the, spot, the speed counter drill, what we'll do is have a DB step in front of receiver and we'll have him step opposite the direction the receiver will go. The receiver will take one step to the direction opposite where he wants to go to set the defender's foot and then he'll bump back outside to create a vertical line. On the hand quickness drill, what we'll have, you can set one receiver in front of the line, have another receiver in front of the receiver, and have him shooting his arms. And what we're trying to do here is teach the receiver to see the, the hands of the DB and quickly and aggressively get them down. So as you can see here, we'll shoot our arms in front of the receiver. The receiver will quickly punch the arms down to get them down. Here's a great example of an isolation for the receiver. Just like a boxer, once the receiver sees the, the hands of the DB, he'll aggressively work to attack his hands, get them down, and re recreate a vertical line. Here's a great example of the highlighter receiver down here at the bottom using the quick hands technique. Initially, the DB will get a quick jam on the receiver, but the receiver is able to get his hands down quickly, establish a vertical line, and execute the play. So as you can see, at the snap of the ball, the receiver, the DB anticipates the receiver's move. He is able to get his hands on the, D, on the receiver. The receiver does a great job of quickly getting his hands down, establishing a vertical line, and saving space for the quarterback to make the throw. Down here is an example of the counter move. The receiver will take one step to set the defender's feet and then bump back outside with the vertical line. So as you can see, as the receiver comes off the ball, he steps one step inside, the defender bites on the step, now he's able to create space on the outside to make the catch. Here's a great example of quick hands in practice. The receiver uses quickness and speed at the line of scrimmage. He causes the DB to, to reach with his inside arm, and you can see how quickly the, the receiver is able to get his hands down and get into his route. Remember, the biggest thing versus press coverage is using speed. Here's an example of a counter step. The receiver here is rolled up. He'll anticipate the receiver's move by jumping aggressively outside. The receiver is able to set his feet and counter the defender's overplay of the route and able to get back into the route, creating separation and able to run through the catch. So by using the quick hands and the counter drill, you teach the receivers, one, to run off the ball, two, to identify the hands as quickly as possible of the defender, and three, if the defender overplays in one direction, you can invite him to, to create separation, which will allow you to create separation in your passing game. The drill I'd like to talk to you about now is a chop and the rip release. The number one thing we talk about on press release is to get going. We don't want to spend too much time at the line of scrimmage because it leads to poor timing and sacks between the quarterback and the receiver. 
The main thing the receiver cannot be afraid of is contact. He must be physical at the line of scrimmage to defeat the defender. The first release we'll talk about is the chop. On the chop, we want to be quick and aggressive at the snap of the ball. It's important that we locate and control the punch arm and clear the recover arm. The second release we'll talk about is the rip. On this, we want to move the DB opposite of where we want to go, and then we want to club up or rip up with the outside arm to clear the DB. This is best used versus a cover two corner or a physical wide receiver. The, the, the drill that we used on both of these uh, types of releases is what we call the chop and rip release drill. What you'll need for this drill is a heavy bag that will go left and right from the receiver. The receiver will buzz his feet and execute his hand placement on the bag. An example of this, so you have the, the bag in front of the receiver and the receivers are going from left to right working on their hand placement and being physical at the top of the route. Once again, the receivers will use quick feet, striking the hand. You can see the receiver at the top is executing a rip. The receiver down here at the bottom also executes a rip. Here's a great game example of what we're trying to get done here. The highlighted receiver down here at the bottom will attack the defender, chop his hands down, and then stack them to get the high ball. So you can see there the receiver comes off the ball, he attacks the defender, he chops his hands down to physical, now he reestablishes a vertical line and he's able to go up at his highest point and make a great catch. Remember, it's very important that the receivers understand that they must be physical at the line of scrimmage. So as a quarterback goes through the mechanics, you can see the receiver will stack him at the top and go up and catch the ball at his highest point. Another example of the rip occurs down here with the highlighted receiver. As a corner comes down, the receiver must know that he has to be physical at the line of scrimmage. The receiver comes in, he stacks the, the DB, moves his feet, go opposite where he wants to go, and then he rips up. Now once you go inside, he must fight back to regain his vertical width. As he does this, he's able to make the DB play through him, and he's able to catch a ball that the quarterback puts in a great spot. Once again, it's important that the receiver knows that once he gets vertical off the press release, he must regain his outside leverage to make the defender play through him. The drill I'd like to talk to you now is angle cut drill. For this drill, you'll need five cones. We'll set the cones up five yards apart in an M or a W shape. The purpose of this drill is to teach the receiver to drive into the cut, snap down with his chest over his toes, but run out of the cut at a different angle, teaching him to get his head and eyes around and to attack the ball when he sees it. To set this drill up, I line the receiver up outside. For this drill, I like to throw the ball to the receiver. As he gets to the top of the cone, he'll snap down, snap his head and eyes around, and catch the ball and attack it coming downhill. This is a great drill for curls and comebacks. So the receiver will snap out my command, snap down, chest over his toes, get his head and eyes around, run out of the break, and attack the ball in the air. When doing this drill, please emphasize the snap down and the ability to run out the break with his head and eyes around, ready to catch the ball. Here are a couple of game examples to show you how the angle cut drill translates. The receiver highlighted at the top will close the cushion of the defender and snap down at the top of his break. As he snaps down, he gets his hot head and eyes around, and he attacks the ball, which creates the ability to get yards after the catch. Another example is of the highlighted receiver at the top of the screen, attacking the defender, snapping down, getting his head and eyes around, and able to attack the ball. The key to getting your head and eyes around is to snap down, chest over toes, and once you attack the ball, you're creating the separation that allows you to get yards after the catch. These two game examples are prime examples of why we do this throughout the University of Miami. The drill I'd like to talk to you about is a backside cutoff or push crack blocking technique which we use in our blocking progression every day. I like to set this drill up with 10 yard separation from the wide receiver and the defensive backs. What we'll do is the receivers will drive off the block five, break down, get their head inside. When the receiver strikes a bag, we want him to lift up so he can simulate driving the DB back. It's critical that they have good body position and they lift up and move their feet. What I'd like to show you now is a couple game clips of wide receivers either backside push backside cutoff or push crack. A good example here is a receiver down here at the bottom. He'll push in at the safety. He'll show up, hands inside, drive his feet, and allows the, the 
running back to run one-on-one -on -one off of the corner. Another example of a wide receiver push cracking is up the high highlighter receiver at the top. He'll push off, come to balance, feel for the safety, and let the corner come field. That allows a running back to, a butt to run off when it creates a big play. The key to big running plays in the run game is receivers blocking downfield, which is very important to us at the University of Miami. Okay, here we go. FTF, first things first. Uh, this is the drill we do at the beginning of individual. Um, every practice, get right to it. Trying to get a whole bunch of reps in, a whole bunch of looks as quick as we can. Um, want to get the guys going at a high tempo. Um, and uh, want our guys moving around, getting them going, getting the party started. Okay, here we go. So get a whole bunch of looks at the uh, at the zone run game, at the man run game. Just want to get them going. All right. Just working through our stuff. This is not necessarily... Um, High contact. We're not trying to knock guys out right here. We're just getting them going and uh, getting into the drills. Okay, and we'll work our releases right here. We teach the two releases. We teach the uh, the rip, um, which comes off our zone footwork right there. We're stepping to stretch our defender right there. Second step, we're uh, we're attacking the elbow, and then we're ripping through, bringing our arm underneath. Um, we also work the swim technique, all right, which is comes off the same zone footwork. We attack the outside shoulder, inside arm is attacking the elbow, and we're bringing our arm over. Bring it over as quick as we can and get on into uh, and we're just having our guys just run through right there and get to the next drill right there. Okay, hit one burst off the line, right? Working the technique, boom, quick motion, and just get out and let's and uh, get the next rep in there. Okay, so we're gonna do this rapid fire. Uh, we want to get our guys as many reps as we can, kind of get the blood flowing a little bit, um, and get get our day started. That's uh, FTF for the tight ends. Hello, I'm Art Kehoe, Offensive Line Coach at the University of Miami. Our intent with these drills is to help you guys become better coaches and to make your offensive linemen very good technicians. Thanks. So much of what we're teaching in pass protection at the University of Miami is about posture. And when we talk about posture, we talk about sitting slightly with your legs wide, sitting down just a little bit, bringing your butt down maybe six inches, and having your feet open and your weight on your arches or the inside of your feet. And we want also to have our elbows up, hands up, tuck our chin, chest out, and then we want to assume that position, and we'll do it like here. For instance, in this drill, we're going to do it uh, with the hands behind the back. Now, if you notice, each player should be pushing off their arches, and we can do it two different ways. We can, I'm doing a direction here where we're just pointing a direction, and, and you can see we'll go left and right, and then we'll go back to the left and back to the right. Okay, the whole time you're trying to emphasize the same things. A slight bend of the butt sitting down, the legs wide, and you're working off the inside of the arches. You can also do it by by direction, right, left. You can rather than point, you can just give a direction. With, now, now in this particular deal here, we're we're going to go to sandbags, okay? Because getting linemen to understand to keep their hands up in pass protection is vital. So again, it's pretty much the same drill, but rather than have your hands behind, we have them with with sandbags. And, they, and these sandbags are great. They have grips on them, and they're about 25 pounds. And, you know, here it is now in the game itself. And you can see uh, our right tackle, John Feliciano, is doing a good job, number 70. If you, if you notice him, he's, he's pushing for depth. He, he is keeping his feet apart. His hands are up. And he gets an excellent punch and manages to keep a good string line between him and the quarterback, and, and he's keeping inside leverage. Also, really, everybody here is doing pretty well. Our left tackle, uh, you know, he, he he's getting a, just not so good with his hands, but his footwork is good, and he keeps inside leverage, and the right guard does a great job, too. Uh, that's a tough block on a three technique. Okay? We'll... Uh, the, the protection breaks down a little bit there late, but here's the next the next look at this, and we're going to find examples of uh, pass protection posture. That's again good by the right tackle. Feet are apart. You know he's getting his head involved a little bit, but it's a good punch. He's keeping inside leverage, 
And nice shot by the right guard. The left tackle's doing a decent job, too. You know, he's he's uh, he's getting his hands on him. He, he, uh, he's keeping his feet apart. Great. I think that's excellent by uh, Brandon Linder, 65. I mean, I mean, as far as uh, as far as getting his hands on the guy and keeping posture, and looks very much like the drill. Uh, one of the real important drills that we're going to work on uh, emphasizes the three type of sets that we use at Miami. We use jump sets on three-step drops. We already, already talked about jump, and, jump set and punch and cuts. And we use lateral sets when when we have a, a five-step drop and we have a guy that's in normal, normal alignment to us. And we use vertical sets versus a wide rusher. And we, we really don't want to go out to that wide rusher. We want to come back, let him come to us so we can also handle games. Now, in this drill, we're going to work all three players, and we're going to try and get a little bit of shot at each type of set. The first one here is a jump set. I'll go back right there. And in the jump set, you see the feet go forward. Just They're trying to go forward just the length of your foot, okay? Sometimes guys will jump out of their shoes on these jump sets, and then when they get some movement, they're hurt by it a little bit, okay? But we just want to go one, two, come forward, and maybe get the the, the defensive uh, player a little bit out of kilter, out of sorts, and, and his timing may be off, and that's why we like to work these jump sets. They're good for it, especially for three-step drops, okay? And then, and then moving forward here, We'll, uh, we'll go to uh, lateral sets, okay? On the lateral sets, you see him. The, the foot goes to the right or to the left if he's aligned to your left, okay? You're trying to keep inside leverage at all times. You're trying to keep the hands tight. You can see him, and you're snapping the head back. And what we call, what we really work on on that is jam, jack, and throw. We're jamming our hands, our foot into the ground, we're jacking our heads back, and we're throwing our hands as hard as we can. Now here is our vertical set, okay? The guy gets a little bit of, you get a little bit of a wider rush, okay? So you have to kind of give ground to get your ground, and now we're going to push for depth, and we're going to push off our inside foot, and we're going to kick back and kick slide, but we want to do it almost completely vertical. Okay, again, none of, the, none of the things you're teaching as a pass protector, as a coach, uh, as far as inside leverage, none of that changes. We're trying to hit you on the inside. We're trying to protect our inside at all times. We're trying to make you go one way to beat us. And the, But the, the hard problem with this is to keep guys square to the line of scrimmage. And this is why we've got to work it so hard to keep them square, to keep them focused on on not turning. And again, now we now we work to the left because you never know. We use left-handed stances, right-handed stances, and guys can get hurt. you got to move guys around. So we always want them to work them both left and right. Okay? We'll start, and again, we'll do the same progression, jump set, vertical, or jump set, lateral set, vertical set. Okay? Uh, here's, here's a little shot here of, of the vertical. And what are you trying to emphasize? Inside leverage. Foot to crotch relationship right there. Don't go wide. Go back and snap the head out. How many? Well, you can see right here, our right tackle is doing a, a good job on on trying to attack. And and uh, and get at the rusher. It's a it's a good job on the jump set, and and is very effective. It's a it's a, it's it's really a nice alternative, you know, to guys that are good rushers. You don't want to let them get in a get in a uh, a mode where they're just coming after you all day, and and they don't have to worry about anything else but the same type of set. Here's more of a lateral set, but this guy, is he's got to get a little bit of width to get on him, but he's trying to jump him. 
He's trying to get after him, and I think that throws this guy off because because he's probably thinking he's going to get a vertical or lateral set there, and it's more like a jump set. Here's lateral set. Okay, and uh, the example is the right tackle. He has a five technique on him. He's in a normal five technique alignment, which would be on his outside shoulder. He wants to jam his right foot in the ground, keep his left foot solid. He wants to work the inside of the body, and, and, and he wants to jack his head back and throw his hands. Jam, jack, and throw on lateral set. It's the same thing on a jump set, only now you're using forward footwork. Okay, this one is a lateral to the side, and you can see he does a good job, gets his head out, stops him good, works his hands good. That's an excellent job. There's an, here's another view, our left tackle on a lateral set. Okay, now I would like to see him jam his left foot a little bit better, but and 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 and, and the the throw of the hands, but the head's good. He's keeping inside leverage. And again, that guy's on his outside shoulder, and, and we're working to keep our left foot in his crotch. That's the relationship we're looking. Left foot to crotch, jam, jack, and throw, keep the head out, keep inside leverage. Right, the right guard here is uh, is using a, a lateral set. Good job of you know the guy's a little loose on him where they can run games on you, and but he's careful enough to not get his head involved and still keep him outside and keep his inside leverage. That's the hardest part of pass protection to teach is to maintain inside leverage because the fastest way to a sack as we all know, is to go inside, and that's where they come from, and, and you, you, you just don't want to give up inside leverage at, at any cost. Here's, a, here's some examples of, a, of vertical sets now, okay? Our right tackle here has a six technique on the tight end, and he's just going completely vertical, okay? But, but And he's turning a little bit, and you want to, you want to work their confidence that they can stay square and play at the line of scrimmage. But, uh, but I really like his inside leverage. He kind of falls victim to a nice little move there, but that's okay because the guy's got to go outside and the ball's going to be gone. Here's our right tackle. And... Uh, Really, you know, it's not a super wide guy, so he doesn't. He, but he's still kicking vertical. He's he's kind of turning a little bit and opening it up, but it's excellent with his head and hands. Watch the head and hands. Head is out, hands are up. He hits the inside number, keeps great leverage on the guy, allows the quarterback to to throw, throw the ball freely. Okay, that's a pretty nice job right there. On any wide zones or sweeps that we run at the University of Miami, we spend a lot of time on our backside pulling technique, BSPT, okay? And, and we really spend a lot of time on making them into cuts. They don't have to be cuts, but we're trying to cut every chance we get to cut. And we work on it a lot. Uh, in this particular drill here, you know, and again, these types of drill I love with bags because you don't have to use uh, bodies and you don't have to beat people up. But but you're getting what you want out of this because you're 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 hitting the point of aim, you're emphasizing the footwork, and you're trying to drive through with contact at the point of aim, which is obviously the outside knee here. Okay. Here's another example of this. You know, uh, Brandon Linder does a good job of, of staying low, getting to the outside of the pad, and taking the proper footwork to get him to where he needs to get quickly. Nice job. Nice job right there. 
You know, guys are coming off the ball, they're down low, they're laying out, they're driving their hands through, and, and they're trying to take the guy out. And some guys can play that block pretty good. And uh, but, but to me, if you're quick and you're jumping cadence and your point aim is good, you're probably going to be good. Here on the back side here, uh, we have an eight-hole play. And uh, our backside uh, left guard and left tackle, there, here comes the left tackle, Brandon Washington, with an excellent cut. And, and that's uh, the left guard does a great job, too, of putting that guy down. Both of them, you can see, you can see the carryover from the bag work of the point of aim and, and, and how they're, uh, they're trying to get vertical and get up the field to get the guy down. And, you know, you're, we're playing uh, uh, off our goal line here, and the yards are critical here, and we gain a nice little four- or five-yard gain. Here's a play to the nine to the left side, our nine-hole play, and, uh, and obviously this involves uh, the, the uh, right guard on the back side. Okay, because when they're running a single, the center and the left guard, so the backside guard ends up having that nose guard almost by himself. We may give him a Heisman with the center to help him, but, but, but he has to get out of there, and I think he could have gone a little bit more wide, but he does a great job of getting the guy down. And you can see, if those guys are down, then, you know, when they come into the whole play side, the play side blockers take care of business. But it's hard to see the backside blockers. So that's why we're trying, or the backside defenders. That's why we're trying to get them down on the ground. If we can get them down on the ground, it's going to make for this guy to get more consistent gains and some breakouts. This is the left guard. We're running an eight-hole play. He gets a pretty decent jump. The left, the left tackle was a little bit hesitant there, but the left guard's going. He gets a pretty and and sometimes you know he gets this guy down, but a lot of guys will play that block better. I think he could do a better job of maybe getting to the front side knee, but I love the way he gets him down. And you can see our back, Lamar Miller, does an excellent job. He he reads it out. The 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 defense is playing playing the hard reach blocks, so now he comes underneath the reach blocks and gains a good 10 yards in there. Okay, let's talk about how your center and two guards are going to block the games that they get inside with the nose guard and the three technique or whatever combination they have in there. When we uh, work on these, we want to prepare our guys for what they're going to see in the game, so we'll break down the film and whether it's a tackle first with a nose around or a nose first with a tackle around or just at an angle or slant to and away from the tight end, we have to work these drills on our different protections and make sure that we're really solid with them. And, uh, and we show the guys the film, of course, during the meetings, and then we work these particular drills right, right here. It's essential that the guard that has an outside technique keeps inside leverage and prevents that guy who's usually the penetrator. And there uh, you see a, a good job of, of our right guard stopping the penetrator, which allows the center and the other guard to be able to handle, handle the, uh, the looper. So uh, they're doing a good job. And again, we will sh we'll show it on tape. We'll practice it on the field. And then, and then they get to, to do it in a game like they're doing right here, and they're doing a good job of it. You want to try and make sure that they're on the same level. The center's usually up a level when he snaps the ball, so he'll get back and get on the same level as the guards, and, and then uh, we'll pass things off, stay square, and do the best we can. Well, as we know, in uh, both college and pro football, the passing games have become so sophisticated, and uh, and people are uh, trying to earmark that quarterback and get him out of the game and one of the, the best devices they use are mixes or or tackle end games or nose tackle games and in this particular drill we're going to be emphasizing uh, uh, our guard and tackle working against uh, a three technique and a five technique particularly here but you can see the things you're going to see are going to be um, 
this is a pirate stunt where both the end and the tackle, you know, uh, slant or angle inside, and you're gonna you're gonna see, you know, and how you're gonna take it on, how you're gonna stop it. But you want to work these different mixes and not just wait on your defense in team periods to do it. You want to do it in your drills and. And one of the things we do, like, for instance, this one here is a T-E. And the tackle is the first guy, T, and then E comes under. Now, what we tell that right offensive tackle to do here, and he's not doing such a hard job, is to arm bar with his left arm. That means we want him to put his left hand up and feel feel that defensive tackle while he looks at the defensive end and as soon as he as soon as he sees the dn come under then he can connect both of his hands and stop that penetrator the tackle on the te stunt okay and of course you want to communicate too so there's got to be verbals verbal communication you want the you want the uh tackle that sees the end coming under to yell out game 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 okay and and we'll work this like crazy. Here here we are, and and uh, it's going to be the right tackle and right guard getting in. This is actually an ET where the end goes first and the tackle goes second. And I I think the 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 tackle could do a better job of protecting his inside, but he does we does try to snap that guy off. The guard gets him a pretty good job. They yell out game. And then, and then the tackle should stay there. Let that, let that, uh, tackle come around and get outside him so he can keep inside leverage. And then the, and then we block the game. Here on the next play, we have, we are, uh, this is the left guard and the, and the, and the left tackle. And actually, the left guard has a two technique. The guy tries to stem out to a three technique late, and and you know so so you know our left tackle's kind of jumping outside on him, but he sees the game. He yells it out. He he does a good job of staying flat and shutting that down. And if you watch the left guard, he's extending his hands and removing that guy so it's a little easier on our left tackle. That's the whole key to these games. Stop the penetrator. The looper is, is a big part too, but the penetrator is the most important guy. you got to stop him and you got to use your hands violently on these things. That's a real good job. Allows us to throw the ball, make a completion, move the chains. Another TE. This is right guard, right tackle. You know that the, the the right guard should, should try. He's trying to stay flat. Notice how the right guard's not giving ground and turning and putting the putting the the right tackle in pearl. And the other thing the right tackle could do is put his left arm up as an arm bar. Watch watch that right end. Or excuse me, that left defensive end. You're watching the end. As soon as he comes under, yell game. Connect your right hand to your left hand, and you're working. You're working the te stunt. That's a really good job. You know. Now we're able to throw the ball. Uh, we'll use punch and cuts on our three-step passing game for the offensive line, and and uh, we have to work our drills for that because uh, what we're trying to do is is uh, use a jump set punch the guy and get a vertical uh, extension with your arms and get him off you and then go down and cut the top of his kneecap with your eyes up and your pads down and it usually times out right to where you get uh, the ball is being thrown and it can go over the head rather than get a bat it down and you have to practice this and we we, we have drills that we work on and uh, and we call it of course punch and cut and uh, and that's what we're trying to do use forward footwork on a jump set get extension and then cut them now here's uh, some practice reps and, and you can see you try and get the guys on defense you know they're getting cut but you want them to make it realistic and come across or engage the defender you know and then and then and then he just works on trying to to drive the head to the near kneecap you also always want to don't give up inside leverage. Always try and stay inside on the defender. That was a pretty good cut there by uh, Ben Jones, our right tackle. Good punch and cut. Here's our right guard, right tackle, and 
you can see that's not a good job by our right guard uh, there, Brandon. There, he he actually didn't jump set the guy, so he didn't get get good wood on him, and and uh, the guy almost batted it down. Anyway, this punch and cut is something that you really gotta drill. You gotta make sure that you're emphasizing the fine teaching points of the jump set, the extension, the the eye eyes on the top of the kneecap, and and the timing of the whole deal. The pulling drill is uh, a drill that we use to get our pl our players to learn all the essentials of pull pulling, but we don't want them to have to hit somebody all the time. And and we'll we'll set up some dots that that give us some some points of aims to, to go to. But basically, we're telling our guy to push off his backside foot, to get depth and throw open his near uh, arm, throw it open. So he, so he can see his target. And then he, we want him to cross over, and that, that, in, that entails about two steps with the crossover. And by the third step, he's coming downhill, and we want his pads to come down. We want the guy to get very vertical. That's why we put the, the, um, the little cones or dots in there so he can work a vertical, a vertical meaning going at the goal line with his pads down and his eyes up. We'll get the players to call numbers sometimes and, and, and we'll have pads in there so he can go under them and stay low. But the basic thing is we want to get lots of reps. And this pulling drill puts two guys right, right uh, uh, opposite each other and they're pulling and both of them are going to the right and they're running through an area that's very similar to the, the same technique they're going to use in the game. And we get tons of reps and we don't have to do a lot of hitting, but it really allows us to do a lot of teaching. And I, Now here's a perfect example. Uh, we got it set up and you can see how many guys are involved and it's pushing off the backside foot, right? You're trying to throw the near arm. You're trying to uh, get into the into the shoot right there, and then get your pads down. Now here it is in, with actual game footage. This is uh, John Feliciano comes right up in the alley, and well, he didn't have anybody to hit, so he kept climbing to the next level defender and just smashed that safety, which is beautiful. Here he is again, and John does a great job, and he just drops this guy. And that's another thing you're looking for your luggage. That's what we say. Look, find your luggage, but we're also we're also going to be like bludgeoning instruments, and we're going to hit anything that's in our path of one, two, three vertical pads down, and we're trying to scrape our backside elbow for skin. And John does as good a job as anybody we've ever had at this. He he gets low, he runs guys over, and he does a good job. Okay, we're going to talk about our combination blocks on the front side, which is the play side of our zone blocks, our zone plays. Uh, we have tight and wide zone and a single is a combination between the with the center and the and the play side guard. A double is a combination with the guard and the play side tackle. And then a triple is a combination with the tight end and the play side tackle. And uh, we have to work all these combinations against movement and, and uh, straight up and we have to use different point aims for tight zones and wide zones, and that's what will work here. Now, now what you're going to see here is a single, uh, and it's going to the left. The left guard's covered. He's on. Center just feels and, and takes the linebacker on. There's no movement involved. Here it is, a game footage, a little chip. The center's on. Center chips in there and then climbs up and, and keeps his eyes on the backer and does a good job. we got a nice gain there. Okay, and, uh, you know, you want to... When you're calling these singles, you, you want to be able to call out the backer so you know who you're working to. Here's a double on an outside zone, and we had we incorporated movement in there, so the aiming point's a little bit wider on outside zone. You can see right there, and with the movement, the, the center or the guard takes over the uh, end, and the tackle gets right up on the linebacker. Here's uh, one more uh, double call, and um, let's see... Uh, you're, you see it right here. It's right guard, right tackle, and they do a good job of overtaking the pinching lineman and getting up on the linebacker. We get a nice about 10-yard gain right there. This one uh, happens to be another double. We're going to the left. Again, it's movement involved. The lead back finds a, 
finds a defender that comes in there, but but we get a really nice double, and we we practice these things against moving and against straight up, and and that way we can handle it if we trust our point of aim and make our line calls correctly. One of the most important things in O line teaching is to be able to 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 teach how to fit your face and hands into a block. Okay? And uh in these in these two drills, fit and finish, as well as refits, we're we're doing it without a whole lot of contact because we're actually pre fitting the offensive lineman into a position where he would be after he hit a guy. Okay? And obviously we want his eyes and face mask right in on the numbers. We want his hands um we want his hands to be uh, down and in and really on the belly itself, okay? And then, and then we, wanna, we want them to feel the power of their face and hands working with their ass and hips and their feet. And so when they, so the, on the first whistle, on this one, this is fit and finish, they're going to drive off five yards. Hey, the head's in there, the hand's in there, and then as soon as they hit the five yard, we'll give them a second whistle, and they'll extend by taking their their hands and driving them up to the pecs, okay? So you go from, from the stomach to the pecs and finish by extending and driving out. And this, to me, is a great drill because you're not doing a lot of hitting, but you're always emphasizing the things that are so important in run blocking, which are pads down, eyes up, thumbs tight, elbows tight, extend and finish, and move your feet. Okay? Now, here's, here's, a, here's a, another example of it. And, again, we're going five yards, second whistle, extend and finish. Now, you're going to see, you know, 78 kind of pushes off there, and that's not really what we're looking for. We're trying to exaggerate what's going on here. We're trying to get them fit in the whole time. We're trying to run off the insides of our shoes on our arches, okay? We're trying to squeeze our elbows and let all that power be transmitted from our feet up to our face and hands, and then to finish off by extending and finishing the block, okay? And it may be an exaggeration, but to me, it's a beautiful way of t telling kids that this is the position we want them to be in on a football field, okay? This drill right here is refits. And what happens, it's the same as fit and finish, only now on the second whistle, the defensive guy becomes the offensive guy, and he, and he sort of snap fits right back into the offensive guy who now becomes a defensive guy. So it's four whistles, okay? And, and going back, here's the first whistle. It's just fit and finish. Now on refits, he, we switch who becomes offense, who becomes defense. He drives back. Now I give him the third whistle. And then the fourth whistle, we switch again, okay? And again, why do you do this? I think the reason you do this is because in a game, you're not always going to fit guys clean like this. But you're trying to get fit clean, and if you're not fitted clean in the block, you can find a way to refit and get yourself fitted into the block. And and what's the other thing? Again, we're not doing a lot of hitting. Uh, you know, your offensive lineman only has so many hits in them across the a whole a whole year, a whole season, and we want to try and keep them healthy, but we also want to be able to to work the fit. Now, here's an example: our right tackle here. Is going to is it, this is kind of on, a, on an angle of what we were showing for the fit and finish, but it's a great job of fitting hands and head, driving with the feet, okay, and then finishing. And he's trying to extend, and he ends up actually, you know, sometimes this happens where a guy just goes on his back, and and we get a pancake. That's a heck of a job. Now we got the right guard, number sixty-five. And, and again, he takes his step first, but what do we got now? As soon as he gets fitted, now he's got, now he's doing the fit and finish. And he's trying to drive on the guy and finish him, man, you know? Finishes happen at a, you know, we do most of this drill going straight vertically, 
but you could also work it at an angle because, as we know, in football, a lot of your your uh, fits come at an angle. Here's our left tackle, Brandon Washington. Does an excellent job with his hands from an up stance. He fits this down lineman, and now he keeps working his hands, keeps extending, keeps driving. And, you know, now it's a little different than our fit and finish because it's, you know, at a couple different angles, but it's the same principles of everything works for the lineman from his feet up to his hands and face. Okay? And the, when the whole body is working together, it distributes the hit all over the place. Uh, one of the most difficult things to teach for any offensive line coach or actually any offensive player is uh, the ability to block people in the open field. And uh, this cage drill, uh, what we do is we take four dots, we try and get them about 10 yards apart, a 10-yard square, and sometimes you have to get them a little bit bigger, and uh, and we keep a guy, as you see right here, we have a guy that's one guy's outside the cage, and another guy's inside the cage. The guy inside the cage has to move around and avoid the guy that's trying to knock him out of the cage. And and, and what you're trying what you're trying to emphasize in, in in this drill is the ability to keep your feet apart with your pads down and your eyes up and your elbows and hands tight. Because the first thing guys want to do in the open field is grab and contain people. And we don't want to grab and contain you in the open field. You're probably a better athlete than us in the open field. All we want to do is assume good position and make you move, and that should be enough room to let the back run. Now, the whole key to this, this is a great conditioning drill, and and... And usually it goes for 10 seconds. You, you, you time it for 10 seconds, and the guy in the cage, here comes number 76 outside the cage, the guy in the cage has to avoid. Now, see, he's not really doing a good job of avoiding. I want him to spin, be like a point guard in basketball. Avoid the guy that's trying to knock you out and stay in the cage. Now, what's the, and again, let's go back. The important part of it is the guy that's in the, that's outside the cage and trying to knock you out of there is trying to get his pads down, trying to keep his elbows and thumbs tight, and trying to bend with his pads down with his eyes up. And it sounds, it sounds like it's easy, but the common mistakes are hands outside, trying to contain, head goes down, okay, and feet cross over. Okay, and you want to avoid those things in the open field. This is a great job, by the way, of Taylor Gadbois giving good effort and trying to grind the guy out of there, right? It's what football's all about, man. We're trying to give effort. Now we're trying to show you where, where, here's, here's actually going back, the, the wing, the wing receiver, the, the, uh, right, the, the right guard and the center. We all have examples of getting in the open field, okay? Now you can see the wing receiver does a nice job of of getting on the guy, and he's got his feet apart, and he's square, and his hands are tight. But then, but then he doesn't finish and doesn't run his feet, and that could be the difference between a play breaking for eight or ten and getting out of there. Could be a, a difference in the game. Now the two, the center and the right guard, you see them; they're they're making connections, and now you got to move, move your feet, get them moving, create a hole. You know, it doesn't always mean that you're moving guys back towards the goal line and putting them on their back. It just means you're moving them and creating lanes for our backs to run in. Here's the right guard, obviously. He zone steps on a tight zone play. Actually, this is a wide zone. And, and, uh, and the, you know, the defensive end works outside on our right tackle, so that puts him up on that linebacker. And now it becomes like an open field block. And, and, and he's engaging, and he, he falls off, and that's probably because he gets his feet crossed up. Because these guys, they're going to use their hands too, and they're going to throw you. So once you get connected, you have to work on your balance, and that's when it gets to your feet being apart and your weight being on your arches. So you have balance with your hands and feet working together. Now that's a good job by him, though, as far as his connection with them. You know, you don't need a big-time hit or a big-time block. The next thing we're going to talk about is our second-level cuts. 
on the uh, on the last thing on the backside pulling techniques. It was the first level cuts, and they're the defensive linemen. Second level cuts involve the linebackers and safeties that come that come and join into the front. And uh, and once we make a decision on our backside pulling technique, here's what we're telling our linemen: you're you're going to go into the line of scrimmage. You're going to aim at the football. When you hit your third step, you want to make a decision on that third step to either cut or seal or climb. And if the decision, because there's nobody to block or because you're past the defender, is to climb, now the second level cuts come into play. And just like we did with the, uh, with the backside pulling technique on first level cuts, we use bags, and now we're going to, of course, move the bags to the second level, where the linebackers and safeties would be. And it's the same thing. You know, you're 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 trying to make that guy defend himself. You're trying to uh, get his play side or outside knee, and you're trying to take it out, and you're trying to go just just a layout technique. Just you, you can see these guys are actually skinning skinning their knees and their uh, and their chest right on the ground. And you see that one that one uh, dummy kind of pops up right there, and you, you can see that actually happen to the defenders during the game. Their legs, if you get them right, they'll just pop out of there and, and, and almost flip them over. You do everything to the left and to the right, here, here's an example. We're going, we're running a nine-hole play to the weak side. We have a single block between the center and the uh, and the uh, left guard, and the left guard gets up. And then look at him now. Now he actually goes back away from the grain to cut this guy, but it's and he actually misses that front side knee. But he's so vicious in the way he approaches the guy that he gets two for the price of one. If you see the other safety behind the linebacker, he gets involved and it's like bowling for dollars, you know. And, and he he gets a nice shot on him and takes him out. And this particular play, we don't bust out of there, but you know that's gonna that's gonna be a great block if we can get him in that scene. Here's uh here's both the left and right guards. And they're coming up on, on two cut blocks on the second level. Great. That's a great look at second level cuts right there. Okay? Both guys are going for the play side knee. Both guys are forcing the defenders to have to protect themselves by either jumping over you or, or low shedding you. And, uh, and to me, they're great. It's hard to defend those blocks, as you can see, and then get off and make a tackle. Okay? And it would have been nice if the right guard actually cut that backer. He didn't get him down, but, you know, they're still very effective blocks. Here down by the goal line, we've got the left guard, Jay Lou, is coming up on uh, Duke's middle linebacker. And uh, he gets by, and it's a heck of a job by both guys. Sometimes you don't have to cut. Sometimes you can drive them by. But it's a, it's a great job of him trying to get the guy down as well as the tackle Trying to trying to get that D lineman down. They got him off the ball, which leads to a touchdown. Each day we're going to do warm up with our offensive line, and we're going to work on zone steps, and uh, we're going to do it against air, and we're going to work tight zones and wide zones, and we're going to work three point stances and up stances or two point stances. Uh, we're going to work to the right and to the left, and we're going to emphasize certain things each day when we're doing this. This particular drill right here is going to the left with tight zones. We want the pads down, the eyes up, we want elbows tight, thumbs tight, and we want to transfer our weight from left to right, or in this instance, from right to left. And we're going to move from the track we're in to the next track over. Okay, we're going to practice this from an up and a down stance. And, and we want to emphasize that you're running off the ball and you're using forward footwork. This right here is an outside zone step. And you can see now it, it becomes a little bit of a you know give ground to get ground thing. And the forward footwork comes right after your first step. 
tackles that have a five technique on this play may may use will almost give ground to get ground footwork, but we're really trying to ex- exaggerate our point of aim to the right or to the left, and they're going to go much wider than they do on a tight zone than they do a, a, compared to the wide zone. Here it is going to the right again. We're, you know, I think we're giving a little too much ground with our play side foot. We want to come full with forward footwork, but the angles are very good, and uh, and and we're doing it from an up stance. And we do a lot of things out of up stances, so we really have to work the two point stances. Hello, I'm Terry Richardson, running backs coach at the University of Miami. I certify that these drills will increase your productivity and your versatility. Enjoy. The four cone warm up drill serves as a ball transitional drill and it also serves as a warm up. All right, if you see the setup, you can see that there are four dots five yards apart. All right, each back has a football. All right, the first command we want to do here, okay, we want to do a sprint, karaoke, all right, and a back pedal. All right, the thing we always want to do is uh, maintain the ball high and tight. We want to switch on the third. Uh, dot uh, smoothly. Okay, we want to make sure we hug the ball and deliver it to the opposite arm. Okay, and uh, we want to stay low on the back pedal, making sure that there's no air under the ball in case a defender, you know, tries to punch that ball out um, from the back. The second command, all right, we want to sprint, all right, shuffle, okay, and then sprint, all right, we want to hug the dots tightly, okay, we don't want to drift. We want to keep the elbow down. We don't want our heels to click, all right? And we want to finish the ball, uh, drill with the ball uh, high and tight, all right? The third command we want to do here, we want to sprint. It's called a speed cut, okay? We want to sprint. We want to hug the dots, all right? Each running back, they want to sink their hips, all right? And plant off their outside uh, leg as they uh, accelerate and finish the drill. Uh, the last command we want to do here uh, is a palm touch. Okay, the lower we are to the ground, uh, the harder we want to squeeze the football. Okay, we want to keep the ball high and tight, right? And uh, and really just finish the drill strong. Okay, this is our uh, four cone warm up drill. The four point explosion drill uh, is one of those fun drills that's easy to set up. Right, it teaches the running back two things. First, it teaches him how to explode and roll his hips, and second, it's the first step. Right, in teaching the uh, running back how to cut block. Okay, here as you see the setup, you have a coach with a stand-up dummy, right? What the back wants to execute here, he wants to execute a spring and load technique where he wants to spring off his back feet and uh, he also wants to load, okay, his uh, shoulder and his forearm simultaneously as he explodes through the defender. His aiming point is two inches above the knee. He wants to keep his eyes up and he wants to fall belly down, okay? You want to work this drill with your right shoulder and your left shoulder, okay? in order to get uh, equal work, all right, and be balanced. Here, you can see him execute this technique from a four-point stand. There's the spring and load, all right? We get another look at it right here. Same thing, the spring and load, falling belly down. Okay, as we go to a game clip here, you can see how it, uh, this drill is applied here. Okay, back comes out of the stands, all right? Good explosion. Okay, through that outside leg, keeping his eyes up, getting the defender on the ground. Once again, same thing, okay, excellent cut block. The sled is one of the most underutilized tools from a running back standpoint in terms of teaching the backs all right, how to block and roll their hips. Uh, from a fullback standpoint, it can be used, and also from a tailback standpoint, it can be used. Uh, whether you want to come out of three-point or a two-point stance, all right, uh, it's a very useful tool. Uh, a lot of... Uh, situations where they feel like linemen are the only one that can hit sleds. Uh, I do believe it's an excellent training tool, once again, uh, for backs to go on and work. All right, the drill we're about to execute right here is a, uh, is a hit, running, and get off, and we're moving down the line, okay, on this hip sled, uh, executing multiple uh, blocks in, uh, in order to get our technique down to stay consistent. Here, the commands, hit, run it, get off, hit, run it, get off, Hit, run your feet, all right, and get off. From the tailback standpoint, you can start in a two-point stance. We want to work down, be explosive, lock the bag out with our hat and hands, all right, 
that's a good job there as we go to the game application here you can see right there's a pressure coming from up top and the fullback here if you key in on the fullback he does an excellent job of seeing it all right rolling those hips all right and running his feet finishing the block okay in order for the quarterback all right to gain some yards on the scramble here watch it from the end zone always serves as the best view you can get really get a close-up here and you can see what he's seeing uh, and this uh, this angle is really is really going to serve just as if you just imagine him hitting that sled and rolling those hips running those feet and uh, basically getting this linebacker to retreat okay all right that's an excellent job there and those are some of the things uh, you know that we do in order to get our hip roll uh, you know by hitting this sled here and being able to pick up uh, blitzes like that uh, from outside linebackers the next draw I like to talk to you about is perimeter cut blocking it's very important that when teaching cut blocking it's critical that we emphasize safety we always want our head and eyes up the receiver must run to the toes of the defender before they attempt to cut we want to cut through the defender always keeping our head and eyes up we set this drill up by having the, the bags set five yards apart from the receiver and we want him running through the bag cutting with his same leg same arm and head up a picture from it from the back as the receiver starting to stand so he'll run up Cut it with same arm, same leg, making sure you can always see what he's hitting. Here are a couple game clips of showing perimeter blocking. The receiver here at the bottom in the slot does a great job of cutting the, the leg of the defender. He squares him up, cuts through the near shoulder, runs through the toes, and allows us to score a touchdown. A lot of times a good cut block will spring a runner to get him the extra yards or go to the touchdown. The two highlighted receivers down here at the bottom will do another great job. They go outside, cut the near leg, get double cuts down, and allows our receiver to score another touchdown. Like I said, cut blocking is a great resource that we use at the University of Miami as part of our blocking progression. The drill I'd like to talk to you about now is a stock blocking drill, which is part of our daily blocking progression. I like to align this drill up 10 yards apart, having the re receivers in their wide receiver stance, and then we'll also have a set of bag holders. As the receivers come off the ball, they'll break down at five yards to come under balance so they can work on their approach. So they'll come to balance, work to the DB, stay with the good base, and once they strike the bag, they'll lift up. Here's an isolated version. Drop your hips, stay low, strike the bag, lift up with a good powerful base. I'd like to show you a couple game examples of good stock blocking technique. The first example is a receiver highlighted in the, in the bunch. As he approaches the DB, he breaks down, strikes his hands inside, and drives the defender back and allows the, the runner to get more yards. The next example is the two highlighted receivers down here at the bottom. As they approach the DBs, they come under balance, good base, hands inside, and drive the DB back, which allows our running back to create an explosive play scoring a touchdown at the University of Miami run blocking is very important it helps create the explosive plays in the run game what I like to talk to you about now is a series of drills that I call change of direction the first drill that we'll talk about is a change of direction vertical drill in this drill the receiver will carry Oka five yards spin out of it and catch the ball at his highest point this teaches the receiver how to flip his hips and relocate the ball. Now I'd like to show you a couple game clips displaying the COD vertical drill. The highlighted receiver down here at the bottom will run off the ball, sell a hitch route, spin out of it, and have to go catch the ball at its highest point. Another example of opening the hips that we teach in the change of direction drill when we go vertical is the slot receiver that's highlighted right here. He'll push vertical, have to flip his hips open to make a catch right before he's getting hit. The change of direction vertical drill teaches receivers to open up their hips, refocus their eyes, and concentrate on the ball in a split second. The last example 
is of the receiver at the bottom, which is highlighted. The push vertical, stacking the defender, and as the quarterback throws the ball back shoulder, he'll be able to flip his hips open and make a catch for a touchdown. By doing this drill, you allow your, rec your receivers to learn how to open up their hips and make catches at different angles, which will be able to... The drill I'd like to talk to you now about is a change of direction out route drill. This drill is designed to teach receivers to stick their foot in the ground and burst out of the break, so they'll carry Oka five yards and burst away. I also like doing this drill in pairs to get more receivers reps at it. Here are a couple of game examples of the change of direction out route. The example here is at the bottom with the receiver uh, in the, highlighted in the slot. He'll push vertical and run an over route. As the ball is thrown, he'll have to open up his hips and make a tough catch. By doing the, the change of direction series, that teaches the receivers to develop the ability to open up their hips and catch the ball at different platforms. Another example is the highlighted receiver here at the bottom in the slot. He'll push vertical and snap and also getting his head and eyes around will be able to create separation and make another tough catch with the defender on him. For these reasons why we like the change of direction series and the change of direction out route. The drill I'd like to talk to you now about is the change of direction comeback. This drill is performed with the receiver karaoke sticking his foot in the ground and coming back at a sharp declining angle. We want a quick karaoke snap down, get your head and eyes around and come back and attack the football. What I'd like to talk about now is a game example of the karaoke comeback. The receiver highlighted at the top will burst off the ball, snap his head, snap his chest over his toes, and flip his hips and break out. As he comes back to the ball, he's able to catch it, transition, and get yards after the catch. Once again, by training the karaoke comeback, you're teaching your receivers to open up their hips and attack the football. The drills I'd like to talk to you about now are our foot quickness drills. The first drill we do is a forward lean drill. This drill is designed to teach the receiver to run with forward lean by keeping his head up so he'll be able to look through the defender. We always throw a ball to the receiver so he can always focus on catching the ball and framing the catch. The next drill we'll talk about is a shuffle drill. This is a drill that we use to teach the receivers how to keep a low, bat, low pad level and base when they're playing. This is also good for stop blocking and route running. So the receiver should shuffle through the bags without clicking his heels, plant and run and catch the ball. We always want the, to end the drill with the ball so the receiver gets used to doing multiple things at once. So he's shuffling, shuffling, not clicking his heels, turning and running, catching the ball. The next drill we like to do is a three-step cut drill. This cut is really good. It teaches the receiver to cut off his outside leg at full speed. The receiver starts outside the back, he runs three steps, snaps it down on his outside leg, snaps it down, and catches the ball. Once again, the receiver will start outside the bag, one, two, three, pressure step, pressure step, and then catch the ball running through the catch. The last drill that we do in this segment is called a snap down drill. This drill teaches the receiver to snap down in, when he's running into his break, keeping his chest over his toes. Once again, the receiver starts in the bag, he'll burst through the bag, Snap down, chest over his toes, eyes up, and then in with the catch. Once again, he'll burst through the bag and snap down, under control back pedal, snap down, and then burst through the catch. These segment of drills we do teaches, teach the receivers how to have great foot quickness. The drill I like to talk to you about is a four cone drill. In the four cone drill, you need four cones. You'll set the cones up in a square, and you can put the distance between five to ten yards apart. The purpose of this drill is to demonstrate proper body position and to teach the receiver to effectively run in and out of the break. The key points of this drill is to snap down, chest over toes, pumping your arms, and having your plant foot within the framework of your body. To start this drill off, I like to do it one at a time. I'll have my receivers line up in a straight line. Here I have the cones placed seven yards apart. And as a receiver blows up, runs off the ball, he'll snap down, keep his hands and eyes, head and eyes up, and, and plant off his outside foot, which is his plant foot. The second way we like to do this drill is two at a time. You'll have one receiver lined up inside, the other outside. This is a great way to create competition 
and to also get maximum reps with your, your players. The third way we like to do this drill is with balls out of every break. So what will happen is the receiver will line up, he'll burst to the top of the cone, plant, catch the ball, drop it, catch the ball in his hands, and ex execute a cone cut all the way around. Here are a few game examples of the four cone cut. The receiver down here in the slot will push up, snap down, chest over toes, and run out of the break and create separation and been able to get the ball up the field. The next example of taking the drill to the game is by the highlighter receiver down here at the bottom. He'll close the cushion of the defender, snap down with his chest over his toes and his plant foot inside the framework of his body and run out of the break. So you can see him snap down, run out of the break, and able to run through the catch and create a big play for us. So these are a few examples of how we take the four cone drill from the practice field to the game. The drill I'd like to talk to you now is what we call the X drill. The purpose of this drill is to teach receivers to come out of breaks at different angles and to attack the ball, but also how to catch the ball and noose it, or what we like to say drop, step, and dunk. To start this drill off, the player will run five yards, run a curl route, snap down, run an in cut, snap down, run a curl, then as he catches it, he'll transition up the field, drop, step, and in dunking. Catch it, drop, step, and dunk. Here's an example with the ball. So the receiver will run a curl route, catch it, drop it, run an in cut, catch it, drop it, and then he'll catch the ball as he run a curl and drop, step, and dunk and get the ball up the field as quick as possible. The key thing is the receiver needs to snap down, chest over toes, see the ball in his hands, and then get the ball up the field. The critical part is the last part is the transition is to drop, step, and dunk to attack the ball up the field. Here's a couple of game examples displaying the extra. The highlighter receiver down here at the bottom will run off the ball executing a curl route. As he snaps down, he attacks the ball, catches it, and drop steps and dunks and is able to get two to three more valuable yards. Another example of the extra and the finished portion in terms of the noose is a highlighted receiver at the top of the screen. As the receiver pushes in and runs a whip route, you can see he can catch it, he drops steps and dunks and gets the ball vertical. That transition allows him to get a big play for the Miami Hurricane offense. These are the reasons we like doing the extra. Hi, I'm Jed Fish, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach here at the University of Miami. I hope that the drills that we put together for you today uh, will help you and help your players, uh, most importantly, be safe, but also improve on the fundamentals of the game. When our quarterbacks walk onto the field for the first time after they do their center quarterback exchange, we like to warm them up with a dynamic stretch. The way we do our dynamic stretch at the quarterback position is we start with a karaoke drop. So each quarterback will have a ball in their hand and they'll do a karaoke drop in order to get their hips flexibility, in order to be able to get work on moving the ball across their chest. We tell them to go chest to chest. No further than that, we like to have their elbows down as they go. We don't want many elbows up. We'd like to see elbows down. We'd like to see the ball working across their chest. Nothing uh, more violent. We do not want them shoulder to shoulder. We want to see them work their hips, loosen up their hips, and find a way to go. We ask them to go at 10 yards each time, between 10 and a 15-yard uh, karaoke drop, and then come back and return with another 10 to 15 yards. After they've completed that, we then ask them to go into a flip their hips, similar to what you would ask a defensive back to do. Here what we do is we direct them with a quarterback and a coach to be able to start them with the quarterback's cadence, and then as they go, we ask them to make uh, certain movements with their hips in order to flip them and become a little bit more violent with their hips and get themselves in position to be able to become more flexible and loose ready to go. The final phase of it is after we ask them to flip their hips we're going to ask them to jog their drops. Okay you can see here the final part of flipping their hips they're going on command and then we're seeing how quickly and how flexible they can go. When, they ask them, when we ask them to jog their drops now what we're telling them to do is this. All good drops are really just a jog in one direction with their head going the other way. 
Here, in this case, we're just saying that their eyes should always be this way, yet they should be turning and they should be jogging going this way. We want the ball nose down, right like this, in that position there. We want elbows down and elbows in, nice and relaxed, working the ball from chest to chest. If we can get that done, we know we can have a nice rhythmic and smooth drop back and forth uh, 10 to 15 yards prior to getting the drill started. This is the way we ask our quarterbacks to warm up, to loosen up, and to be ready to go. What we do here after we go through our uh, throwing progression to begin practice is we go to what we call first things first. There, here we do running back quarterback ball handling. It's so critical to make sure that we're properly seating the football every single time, that we have no issues with our mesh, that our quarterbacks can carry out all fakes, that they understand how the passing game and the running game work together, and that we get some live fast repetitions prior to any team period or 9 on 7 period so the quarterbacks and the running backs have no issue with the ball handling at that point in time. We ask our quarterbacks to be able to handle three or four different things in the ball handling process. Number one, we tell the quarterbacks an inside zone that we want them setting up in the pocket. Our tailbacks are aiming at the outside leg of the guard and then making their read for the first inside lineman or down lineman from inside out. The quarterback has to sell it every single time on the inside zone play like he's running play action. We want him to keep the ball hidden as long as we possibly can and then snap his head around looking for the free safety, setting up in the pocket. When we ask our quarterbacks to start going to the outside zone play, now we're asking our quarterbacks to carry out keeper fakes. Here you can see the quarterback running what we would call 18 strong, where we have a split flow outside zone run play. The quarterback is stretching it, understanding the tailback's landmark is to the butt of the tight end. As the quarterback uh, hands the ball off, he then carries out a keeper fake. When we carry out keeper fakes, what we're doing is we're making sure that our quarterbacks get no deeper than 10 yards. More importantly than that, we're asking our quarterback to find the defensive end. The defensive end will either be rushing up the field or will be coming straight down the line of scrimmage. If the defensive end is coming straight down the line of scrimmage, okay, in this case right here, now you can see the quarterback will have his eyes around. He'll find the defensive end and indicate to the play caller whether or not the keeper is going to be there or not. If the uh, defensive end is, is playing high and closing right here, you can see that the uh, quarterback would indicate to the play caller to continue handing the ball off in the running game. We're, in this picture here, we're running a full flow outside zone run, but both of which will always have a keeper fake any time we tag an 18-19 to it, and the quarterback should come out running. The next phase of this is power. Here, when we're at whatever we're running, 16 or 17 power, we're asking our quarterbacks to reverse out. What's most importantly here is that we don't take away the A gap from the runner. We have to make sure that our landmark's great, that our, tail, our quarterback is going straight back, that we're giving the tailback the front side A gap to the back side A gap, and we're not making the read for the tailback based on the width that we're asking him to go or the fact that we're actually pushing him out of his read based on how wide we're going. We need to go straight back, hence us reversing out rather than opening to it, and then finishing in the pocket just like we would be throwing some form of power pass. The final run of the day when we go through our FTF is any form of our toss game. Here you can see we're running a toss to the right. When we run a toss to the right, we're asking the quarterback to reverse out again, and we tell him to follow his pitch. We'd like him to take two steps to follow the pitch to make it a nice, clean, easy, soft toss to the tailback, and then snap your head around, carry out the fake, and try to find the, the defensive end. We do not want him to rush out of it. We do not want him to just toss it and run the other way because we feel like we'll lose our accuracy in that regard. Final phase of the FTF is we sometimes incorporate a pass into it. Uh, so often we don't get to throw to our tailbacks. So here you can see we're incorporating either a throw to the fullback or to the tailback right here. Just sitting him down the pipe to make sure the fullback is not just always blocking, number one. And number two, we're able to get a live rep on a throw prior to the start of uh, any team or seven-on-seven -seven period. After we do our line drill, we always go to what we call rhythm throw. 
Rhythm throw is really just playing catch, quarterback to quarterback. The difference being that we never want our quarterbacks to stand flat-footed. We never want them to be square at their, at their uh, partner. We always want them to be throwing on some form of angle. We always want them to be getting about a 15 to 18-yard throw in. And most importantly, we want them always working their feet. You can see here, whenever we ask them to do rhythm throw, in this picture here, the quarterback's taking a three-step drop. In the next picture, you can see our quarterback taking a five-step drop. Both times we go through a progression, a pretty logical progression of a three-step drop, five throws to his left, three-step drop, five throws to his right, and then a five-step drop, five throws to his left, and then a five-step drop, five throws to his right. Here we're asking our quarterback to make sure as they're throwing that they still continue to work on great fundamentals of a nice wide base, never uh, heel clicking, always throwing with a short stride and no stride, pointing the back part of the football at the target, ripping through with their uh, back hip, and getting ready for the day of practice. Rhythm throw is something we do every day, and uh, we make sure that that's our best chance to get our quarterbacks warmed up and ready to go. Here at the University of Miami, we have about 10 to 15 minutes of individual every single day through the course of practice. Uh, we've already done our warm-up drills, our line drills. We've already done our run FTF and our pat and go. And now we're really working on quarterback fundamentals. Quarterback fundamentals start with their feet. And it's so important for a quarterback to understand how to move in the pocket. We encourage our quarterbacks to hurry up and have a fast drop, the fastest drop they possibly could have. And then we require our quarterbacks to always be making their movements with their back foot. We want them to move with their back foot and not their front foot, so they're locked and loaded and ready to throw the ball. Here you can see the quarterback make a movement right here with his back foot, and now he can step with a short stride or no stride and throw into any, any pass he wants. If he stepped with his front foot first, now he would then have to recover with his back foot and then make the throw. Here you can see the quarterback was given one movement to his left and then two hitch and throw the ball. Here you can see the quarterback again, uh, gets a nice wide base, have his first movement with his back foot, constantly ready to go, second movement, two hitch, and let it go. We don't ask our quarterbacks to make a ton of movements because that's not necessarily practical in the game of football. We're looking for two movements per drill. You can see right here it's a quick two movements, two hitches, and give the ball. The next part of our drills we incorporate with pocket movement is the agiles. Here when we run the agiles aspect of our, of our drill work, what we're asking our quarterbacks to do is really work on quick movement number one, sliding in the pocket number two, and getting depth on their drops number three. Here we set up two agiles about three yards apart. We're asking the quarterback to take a full drop here. He's taking a five-step drop. And now we're saying, okay, here what we want you to do is work on your movement. Your first step will be with your back foot. You'll keep a nice wide base, and you'll slide in the pocket. Here it's just a real quick push back five, one movement, slide up, and make your throw. You can see the quarterback again here, push up, three steps, or three hitches, so to speak, and make your movement. We go on either side. Here's a five-step drop. Move with his back foot. Now he's sliding up, ready to make his throw. And as we've talked about earlier, we're trying not to throw it to the guy directly in front of you, but always be thrown on some form of angle. Here you can see the quarterback again. Now what we do is we're now incorporating from no longer working the agiles, we're now using the boards. reason why we use the boards is because we want to step over the boards. If we're stepping over the boards, now what we have to do is we have to make sure that they're low enough to the ground that no injuries occur. We don't like to step over the agiles, we like to step over the boards. Here in this drill, you can see what we're asking our quarterbacks to do is maze in and out of this, of the boards, rather than step over them at first, and then the next part of it will be our step over aspect. Here we're telling the quarterback to take a nice, uh, in this case here, seven step drop off of a hard play action. When he gets to the top of his drop, now he's stepping with his back foot, sliding in the pocket. After he slides in the pocket, we want another step with our back foot, then we want to get another drop going. So we want to try to incorporate two drops in this drill, one seven step drop, one five step drop, two movements on either side, and then be able to get a, a two hitch throw into the flat. Here you can see the quarterback again sliding up in the pocket, never crossing over until he, unless he's dropping, and never heel clicking as he's pushing forward in the pocket. 
We're just trying to maze in and out of the boards in order to be able to get ourselves in position to constantly be able to be fast fit, fast feet, uh, slide in the pocket, and avoid any sacks. Here you can see we're asking our quarterbacks in this case to actually step over the bags. Now the quarterback's going to taking a five-step drop. Okay, so we're one, two, three, four, five. Now we'd like to keep a nice wide base. And here now we're telling the quarterback to go on direction which way we want him to step over the bag. Here you can see the quarterback's always moving with his back foot first, which makes a huge, uh, a huge difference in his ability to release the football. And then secondly, you can see the quarterback's keeping a nice wide base and prepared to make all the throws. Again, you can see right here the quarterback moving in the pocket, quick movements in the pocket, quick movements, and prepared to make every throw bringing his back hit through. Love how that drill looked, and really you could see the quarterback's constantly moving, never crossing over, and prepared to make any throw. This is the way we use our agile bags, our boards, and our directions for our pocket movement. As I mentioned earlier, pocket movement is a critical part of the quarterback drill work that we do every single day. We believe that the whole quarterback position is based on the quarterback's feet. We also believe that the quarterback needs to be outstanding in the pocket and have great pocket presence while he's back there. In this next five play sequence, what we're going to do is show you examples of how the quarterback's going to move in the pocket and how his feet are going to permit him to find open windows and make big completions. Here you can see the quarterback, after dropping straight back, is now sliding in the pocket, ready to throw the ball. He's always keeping that nice wide base. We'd love to see him make all of his movement with his back foot first, and now he's prepared to have a short stride or no stride and be able to deliver a 20-yard pass down the hash or down the middle of the field. Here you can see in the next example is that the quarterback, again, is now here a shotgun situation. And now the quarterback's prepared to make a throw, and he feels two edge rushers up in the pocket. The quarterback, being accustomed to doing pocket movements every day, slides in the pocket and is prepared to make a throw and deliver the ball straight down the middle of the field again. Here from the end zone view, you could watch the quarterback's feet, feel the high rusher, have them push up in the pocket, two hands on the football, sliding and ready to go. As he does this drill... Every day, it's now on Saturday when it's game day, it's, a, it's second nature for him, and he's able to step up and deliver a 25-yard completion. Along with teaching our guys about having great pocket presence, we teach our guys about ball security. We all know in football that turnovers uh, cost teams games. Whether that be interceptions or fumbles, we make sure that we do everything we can to discourage it. We ask our quarterbacks to go through a circuit every single day of ball security. And then on top of it, what we do is a little ball security circuit within our pocket presence drills. Here you can see our quarterbacks are working on their ball security. In this picture, what you can see it really on a close-up is that we're asking our guys to take a drop and assume that somebody has gotten in pretty clean. We want them to have both hands on the ball, gripping the ball tightly as they drop, moving the ball across their chest, feeling the pressure of the, of the defensive end trying to strip or poke the ball out, now working through it, stepping up and going. Really what's critical here is we don't ever want our quarterback to drop with one hand on the football. So as we take the practical part of this drill, is once they drop with one hand on the football or they move in the pocket with one hand on the football, now the football is becoming vulnerable to a potential strip attempt. So as they go back, the coach should be here trying to work the football, trying to swat at the football, and then once the drill is complete, meaning once the coach has gotten a couple swats at the ball, now you can see we're back to our fundamentals, we're back to a good wide base, we're back to the back tip of the football, pointing directly at the target, which is permitting the quarterback to get over the top of the ball. You can see as we're doing this, we're trying to get a nice C between the thumb and the index finger. We're trying to get a great base right here. And now we're bringing that back hip through on every throw. Final look here of in the pocket. That's trying to make one or two strip attempts by the coach. That's all that's needed to remind the quarterback to keep both hands on the ball when they drop. And now you can see the quarterback, same situation as 
prior, we still want to keep a nice wide base. We want to make sure we short stride or no stride into the throw. There's the back tip of the football pointed directly at the target, and that allows the quarterback to get on top of the football and make the throw. And most importantly, understanding that ball security is the difference between wins and losses. Other than running the standard routes with the wide receivers that we do every day, whether it be throwing hitches, slants, curls, or go routes, we enter. We have a phase in our program called run game answers. When we run our run game answer drills, what we're doing is we're finding the different drills or the different throws that we would throw in a situation where a run is called. Here we would have an outside zone play called to the right, and we would be running what we would call a smoke route to the left. The receiver's not supposed to get any depth whatsoever. He's going to take one step and then come back to receive the football. The quarterback here is going to be in a staggered stance. And as he's in his staggered stance with his left foot up, his first step will be back with his right foot, so he's immediately able to turn two. When you turn two, it's turning a double play, and that's kind of the drill we're working on right here. How quickly can we get the ball out of our hands and throw to turn two? Here we're trying to get the ball out again. You can see in this case here, the quarterback again has a staggered stance with his left foot back and his right foot forward. I'd actually like to see a little bit more separation between his left and his right foot. Now he can start, his first step could be back with his right rather than with his left, which now allows one second or a half a second faster to make this throw. Here you can see the stance again, left foot is back, right foot is up. The, again, the quarterback takes a cheat step. We're trying to avoid having to take that cheat step and immediately go to making the throw. You can see right here, now the quarterback is transitioning into a bubble throw. So now we're in a slot combination with a, a run going this way strong. And we're having a slot set up over here with this wide receiver is practicing blocking the bubble for the bubble. Quarterback is able to transition, get his hips around immediately, and to, uh, turn two again. We're trying to now throw the bubble as quickly as we can, give a nice accurate ball, but how fast can we transition? This drill right here has got to be done every single day in order to work on how quickly we can get our hips around, how quickly we can throw an accurate ball, and as you can see, I'll try to avoid the best we can any potential cheat step. Right here, we've now gone from the smoke route to the bubble route, and now we're on a cigar route. Here in this case, we're saying that if it's a press coverage a smoke route, that we're going to take one step and run a go or a slant. Uh, and here is a good example of the quarterback doing nothing different. The wide receiver taking one step vertical, running the slant. Quarterback, again, trying to get the ball out of his hand as quickly as possible. The final part of the progression when we're running the run game answer progression is a little quick screen. Here we're having the wide receiver work to go block the outside corner. We're taking one step and drifting back on our quick screen. Quarterback's in gun and the same type of deal, how quickly he can transition and turn two is the key to the whole play. If he can transition quickly, like in this case here, how quickly can we get around, get the ball out of your hands and throw a nice accurate ball, the faster and the better and the more positive yards we can get. That's a concept that we're going to be working on over and over throughout all of camp, and it's a nice little addition to your uh, passing game and your running game if you can get this out of your hands quickly, if you can flip your hips very quickly, and you can immediately uh, throw the ball to the outside receiver for as many yards. We're telling the receiver to circle the defense the best we can, and we're telling the inside guy to go cut or drive the corner to the sideline. Run game answers is an important part of our every day, and we need to concentrate on always throwing the smoke routes or the now routes, the one-step slants, the bubble screens, as well as a wide receiver screen in order to be successful. Okay, now let's put some of those drills to use here. You can see that we've been working on throwing those uh, run game answers, and here's a great example of us throwing what we call a flash where we had two over two, and we gave the quarterback an opportunity to look out there, and if there's off coverage, we would throw the ball out there. Our inside guy would get the cut. The outside guy would take it back out, and we would see what we could do with how many extra yards we can get. The next example we'll look at here is when we throw a cigar. Here, the quarterback's uh, traditionally under center to throw the cigar. Cigar is our one-step slant. As we mentioned, quarter, it's off coverage against the wide receiver. 
the quarterback steps back and then immediately fires the ball. We tell the quarterback we're always looking to try to turn two on these type plays, meaning turn a double play, how quickly we can get him to flip his hips, transition the ball, and get the ball to the wide receiver. Before we join the wide receivers and the uh, running backs and the tight ends as a full group to do our routes on air period, what we do is we go to what we call progression period. Here in the progressions, we have the quarterbacks work with one or two guys, uh, whether it be kickers or whether it be receivers available during this period, and go through the quarterback's progressions. Here the quarterback is going through what we call a sweep the board read, where he's starting on his right over here and trying to hit a stick route over here, and then we have that stick route either defended or not to cause the quarterback to either catch and throw to the stick, or in this case here, catch look at the stick, not there, complete his drop, take three more steps, keep a nice wide base, have a slight hitch, and throw it to the outside under. The read would go from a stick to the inside under to the outside under, and then we would get the ball completed and work the quarterback's feet and vision. The next one in the progression is what of that day in particular would be the concept of mills. Mills were working one to the tight end, we're working two to the X on a hook, and then we're working three to the back in a check burst. In this case here, the quarterback's uh, reading it based on the hands of the receiver. The coach can stand back here 10 yards behind uh, the quarterback, as you can see in this picture right here, and the coach would indicate a one, a two, or a three with his hands. If he gives a one, the first guy, the number one receiver in the read, would stick his hands up immediately so the quarterback can time it out properly. The next example is the coach puts a number two up, so now the quarterback comes back, drops back, looks to see if number one is open. Number one does not flash his hands, so the assumption is he's not open. So then the quarterback finds himself number two in the progression. The final part of the Fox 2 Mills is now, will the, quarter, will the coach give a three? If that's the case, then that means the quarterback drops back. He looks for number one. One number one is not open. Looks for number two. Number two is not open. And on his second hitch, now he finds number three, which is the back on a check burst. The third progression, or the third route of the day in this instance here, is what we would call south. South is an under route, a five yards pushing vertical coming flat across to an out route to a check wide, where the back would be on this side, the under would be over here, the out route would be over here, and the tailback would be over here. The quarterback would stand there, or the coach would stand there, and let him know whether or not it would be one, two, or three getting the ball. Here we tell him, don't put your hands up, find the check wide, and go. Quarterback knows that if the under is not there, the check wide has to be, so he delivers him the ball. Here in this final case, we've now incorporated a third member in the drill. Now we've added another defensive player, whether he be a kicker, a punter, or a quarterback available, and we tell him to read this out. And it is his job to either take away the under or the out. Whoever he takes away, the quarterback needs to set his feet and be ready to throw that. If he took away the out route, the quarterback might throw this on no plant or on the plant. If he wants to throw the if he wants to throw the out route because the under gets taken away, now the quarterback must hitch once, even possibly twice, to be able to make that throw. The ball should be thrown out wide, outside, at 10 to 12 yards. If he's going to make that throw and the throw is not there, just find the back. The final part of the progression concept is the x-ray concept. The x-ray is working off of a hard play action. Here in this case, we've now added a wheel linebacker into the mix. We put our fullback over here, and our wide receiver is outside of the screen right now, but he is at 18 yards uh, between uh, the hash and, the, in this case here, the center. As the quarterback drops back and takes a full seven step, his job is to find the safety. If he feels that the Will linebacker then has entered the rush and is not a, affecting the throw at all, now we have our X standing here at an 18 yards uh, depth, sit, waiting for the football to come his way. If the Will linebacker off the play fake turns and runs and tries to look up the X, now we have the fullback in the flat waiting to catch the football. Here you can see a good example of now this Will linebacker here does not take the cheese. He backs up and eliminates the opportunity to throw it to the X because our saying here at the University of Miami is don't ever fight zone dropping linebackers. If you have a linebacker that goes 8 to 10 yards deep, 
No reason to try to throw over him. Just throw around him to the first available running back on either side. In this case here, the fullback's available on a bloody flat. And who knows how many yards we can get. We work these progressions in order to get ready for the next phase of our program, the routes on air period. Part of the progression drill that we work on a daily basis, we pick different concepts and we work those concepts. Four of the concepts that we showed you in our progression drill earlier, um, we're going to show you now in game-like situations. The first one was we showed you a stick route where we asked the outside receivers to run a double under. In this picture here, we're asking our outside wide receivers to run what we call Patriot concept. But you can see very similar that we're working a similar uh, progression read and able to work all the way across the field. Here you can see the quarterback sees the stick route right now. As he sees the stick route, he's going to take that stick route all day long. It's a throw that he's accustomed to throwing because he's thrown it over and over and over again. And we're now ready to take it immediately upon catching the ball and gun and releasing the football. Another example here on the progression read is in a very similar concept. Here's our stick, and then here's our first under, and here's our second under. If we're running that concept, we'll now work the progression of either this corner jumping the stick route and opening up this go route, or this corner staying with the go route, linebacker taking this guy away, and now working our inside under to our outside under. These are progressions that we're working on a regular basis. Here you can see the corner jumping the stick route, opening up the whole shot for the outside wide receiver and a 77-yard touchdown. It's all based on the quarterback understanding the read, seeing the read on a regular basis in practice, and being able to practice these type throws every day. The next part of our drill work is what we call pocket presence. In pocket presence, we work three different phases of the quarterback. Um, fundamentals. The first thing is we tell the court we work the quarterback taking a normal drop, feeling pressure, feeling contact, escaping from the contact, working through the initial hit, having them assume that they missed a tackle, then stepping up and making a throw. Here you can see looks like two defensive linemen are colliding or impacting the quarterback, yet the quarterback holds on to the football with both hands, steps up into the pocket, and still delivers the ball. We just want the quarterback, when they're in pads, to feel contact because they're never live in our practice. We then, the next phase of it, is we want the quarterbacks to feel like they got hit after the fact. So now what we're asking our quarterbacks to do is once they release the football, now we want them to feel contact. We want them to feel guys around them. We want them to feel that there are other players that are about to hit them. And really the key is almost use the term, do you hear the footsteps? Do you hear that defensive end on either side of you that's about to lay into you? We tell our quarterbacks you have to have great pocket presence, stand firm in the pocket, be ready to take a hit, and then move forward. The final phase of our pocket presence drills is when we have two pass rushers. We tell each pass rusher, number one and number two, whether or not we want him to be high or low. So for example, in this picture here, we told both of our pass rushers to stay high enabling the quarterback to just step up in the pocket, pass the rush, and deliver the throw. The next time, we told one of our guys, number two in this case here, to be low, and number one to be high. That would mean the quarterback would first avoid the low rusher, and then step up in the pocket to avoid the high one. Here you can see the quarterback going through some form of logical progression with his feet, to now number one is low, Number two is high, which enables the quarterback to first avoid this way and then step up because of the high rusher here to step up in the pocket there. You can see the quarterback's constantly moving. Both hands have to be on the football in order for this drill to be a success. The quarterback cannot cross over. He cannot heel click, but rather stay with a nice wide base, base be able to step up and slide in the pocket. The final rep right here, as you can see, again, the quarterback, both times these two rushers are staying high, and the quarterback is stepping up, sliding in the pocket. Here, you're avoiding the low man to the right, and then the high man behind it. So we're going through a lot of different progressions here to work on our pocket presence to make sure we understand how to stay firm, stay strong, and secure the football in the pocket. 
If the question ever comes up from your players on why we do pocket presence drills, why we have coaches sit there and swat at the ball, why we ask managers to hit the quarterback with two hand shields uh, after or before he releases the ball, you can show them this clip. Here you can see the quarterback now in the pocket getting the ball swatted at by the defender and the ball coming free. A red zone opportunity that turns into a takeaway because the quarterback doesn't have two hands on the ball and isn't sliding and moving in the pocket protecting the football. Here, as soon as he releases the left hand from the ball and now he's kind of moving around, you can see the right hand of this defender right there coming in there and making a play. We try to avoid that at all costs and try to drill that on a daily basis. This next, next example here, you can see the quarterback is dropping back, ready to push up in the pocket on a second and 25 type play, feels a high rusher. As soon as he feels a high rusher, he steps up. You can see, just like we had two managers both rushing high at the first time, you can see in this case here, there are two rushers both rushing high. Now the quarterback steps up, quarterback gets a a scramble drill, he makes a go call, the go call tells this back right here to turn and look up the first defender that shows up, and now we'd like the quarterback here to protect himself and get down. What's important here is how we emphasize the quarterback every day that when we do any form of sideline drill or any type of ball security drill, it's critical the quarterback puts the ball on his outside arm the ball is protected, that the only person that's available to, to strip the football is on the sideline, and now the quarterback here can give himself up with a nice slide and be able to move on and move forward into the next play. After we do our warm-up drill of karaoke drops and jogging our drops and flipping our hips, the next thing we're going to do is what we call line drill. When we do the line drill, what we're asking our quarterbacks to do is partner up and work this line right here. As they work that line, what we're asking each guy to do is drop. And what we're telling the quarterback to do is some people call it a clap drill, others call it a line drill, but what we're saying is the quarterback is going to drop until their partner claps. When their partner claps, we're telling the quarterback to take one hitch and throw. Other times we're telling the quarterback to throw on the plant, and other times we're telling the quarterback to make it a two hitch throw. But as you can see, the quarterbacks are just going to go into a normal drop, and you can see it's this group right here that are, going to add, that are actually doing the drops, and the other two are being the clappers. And as they clap, they come through, and most importantly, as they drop, what we want them to do is make sure they're working the line, staying a nice straight line drop, able to react immediately upon the quarterback's clap, stop, hitch, keep a nice wide base. One thing we encourage here at the University of Miami is not to ever heel click. It's really important for quarterbacks to be able to throw off of a very short stride to no stride. In order to do that, we need to make sure we maintain a very wide base, have our shoulders parallel, have our legs shoulder width apart, and be able to be ready, locked and loaded to make every single throw immediately. From the ground, we can give you a better example now of what the drill should look like. Here you can see the quarterback, in this case here, working with his elbows down, working the ball across his chest. And here, the quarterback's throwing on the plant. So the, the, uh, his partner gave a clap, quarterback released the ball immediately on the plant. Same in this case right here. So as he's working this line, it's going uh, the whole time is a drop. And no matter what the drop's going to be, the quarterback's asked to throw it on the plant. And now, you can see the quarterback has now moved to throwing the ball on a hitch. Here, the clap occurs, the quarterback hitches once, and releases the ball. What, what we really like about this right here is the fact that the quarterback has a nice wide base. And when he stops and is ready to throw the ball, he's right now looking to try to get the back tip of the football pointed at the target. Okay, we'd like the back hip pointed at the target. We would like the, the, both this leg and this leg to be shoulder width apart. We would like to maintain a nice wide base, never heel clicking. And you could see through this hitch right here, they maintain that base, never getting closer than there. And now the quarterback releases the ball with great trajectory, bringing his back hip through every throw, and is able to go. This here we call the line drill. We do it every single day, and it's a way for our quarterbacks to begin getting loose and getting ready for the day. Throwing on the move is a critical part of our offense, 
and it's part that we have to make sure that we practice every single day. What we've done is we've incorporated a few different drills that are throwing on the move section, which permits us to continue to work on and get better at being able to concentrate on number one, getting our hips turned, number two, being able to throw as we attack a target, and number three, making sure that we release the football out in front of us rather than wrap the ball too far behind us as we're making the throw on the move. The release point needs to be a little bit further than usual out in front of you, almost like a dart that your hip has to make sure that it follows through and comes through the entire throw. And really what's critical is that we understand the drop and the dynamics and the fundamentals of a throw doesn't change. You can see right here what we want to make sure we can do is we have to make sure that our guys understand that as you attack the line of scrimmage, that you have to first get your shoulders parallel to your target, and then once you do that, you now have to get your, shoulder, your off shoulder, your non-throwing shoulder pointed at the target prior to the release point. So we start with getting your shoulders parallel, then we force the non-throwing shoulder to be pointing at, the, at where your, your target's going to be, then we try to get the ball released out in front, and as you can see here with our quarterbacks, as they're attacking the line of scrimmage, we call this a circle drill, where we're able to circle around and be able to keep a constant flow here for about a minute to a minute and a half. Uh, at about 45 seconds, we switch and we go counterclockwise in order to attack the line of scrimmage, get our hips around, work on our flexibility, step into our throw still, and make sure that we finish with a nice, accurate, and consistent throw. The next part of throwing on the move is we start working on what we call our keeper drills. Here, because of the fact at the University of Miami that our outside zone game is so much a part of our offense, we need to make sure that we can handle the defensive end with numerous different things. Some teams handle it with a sifter, some teams handle it with reverses, some teams handle it with ghosts or fake reverses. What we like to do is we like to handle the backside end with our keeper or action pass game. A part of our keeper and action pass game is for our quarterback to understand on if you have to throw hot, how do you do it? Well, our terminology here at the University of Miami is to stop and pop. Stop and pop. So what the quarterback's trained to do is upon making his flash fake to the runner on the outside zone, he has got to snap his head around and find the defensive end. If we can get the defensive end to chase the line of scrimmage, then we don't have an issue. If we had, like in this case right here. But in the one prior, if we have the defensive end now force you to stop and pop, we need the down flat runner in this picture right here to stop and mirror or shadow the quarterback. Here, this would be our down flat from the tight end position. He would be stopping because of the upfield rush and be available for the throw. His alerts have got to be to a nine technique uh, or to an outside blitzer. We also tell our over route to stop uh, and shadow the quarterback, which allows us to stop and pop and make that throw as well. Because we run keepers both from under center and from the gun, we find it necessary to practice it the same way. Here you can see us practicing a keeper with a defensive end that's closing quickly and allowing us to attack the line of scrimmage and throw what we call the easy comeback throw. The only reason why we call it an easy comeback throw is the only time we we'll ever throw a comeback in the keeper game is if it's free access and an easy completion. It's kind of what we're looking for here to only make that throw if it's easy because we're looking for the down flat or the over route in all their cases. Here we're the final phase of our pocket, uh, you know, movement or throwing on the move, or throwing on the move drill section is when we're throwing our sprint out game. Here you can see our quarterbacks are running sprint option. What we tell our quarterbacks is we line up here in about the right middle or the middle of the field. A sprint option, we're looking at about a five step drop on the quarterback. He's taking on his fifth step, he's releasing the football, still making the final step, or his left leg is, should be the front leg. His back right hip should be bringing through on the throw. His hip should be attacking the line of scrimmage more. And after making the catch, we t after making the throw, we tell him to follow and become the catcher. We then want this guy to come over here and get back in line, and now we're able to keep a nice rhythmic throw in our drill work without having to 
start over without having to slow it down or without having to wait for the next guy to get set. You can see as soon as they make the throw, they get in their spot and we're able to keep the drill going. It's a critical part to being able to use all the time that we're permitted to have. Here on the throw, on the uh, throw on the run drill circuit, now we're throwing the sprint option, but we're throwing the curl route. Some of you might recognize this from Dwight Clark on the catch uh, when the San Francisco 49ers played the Dallas Cowboys. Here we're running the sprint right option where we're asking this guy here to run the curl route. We're assuming that our short flat got, got taken away by the defender, and now we're trying to come back here and on five steps stick our right foot in the ground, throw with our left foot, and be able to complete that ball right there uh, for a big-time completion and a, a big play. These are the drills that we use when we're throwing on the move. This is the work that we do to make sure that we are able to execute our concept of, number one, being able to be a great outside zone team, number two, being able to be a great keeper team, and sprint out team. They're easy completions, and I highly recommend to include them in your offense. Here's a great example in a game situation how we use our keeper drills to our advantage. Here you can see we're lining up and we have a situation where the quarterback's going to have to stop and pop. There we could take the drill work to the, to the game field, be able to stop, pop, and deliver the slide for a 30-something yard gain. The key part of the whole deal, as you can see from the end zone view, is that the quarterback who comes out with a nice wide stretch fake and is selling the, is selling the outside zone now gets his eyes around quickly. When he sees this rusher coming up the field, he knows he has to stop, pop, and deliver the ball. Here's another look at the keeper. Now we're looking at a one where the quarterback is in shotgun, another one of our drills where we work the keeper out of gun. Here the quarterback is faking the outside zone play and coming back out and keep, stays on the move. What's critical here is we want the quarterback to, as he's coming around, you can see it almost looks like the circle drill. As he's coming, he's now facing the target, getting his left shoulder pointing at where he wants to throw the ball, and now he's hitting that corner route as he's going. This should look exactly like the circle drill that we did earlier, as well as when we worked the keeper game out of shotgun. The final keeper that we want to show you, or in our pocket movement type throws, is when the quarterback's under center here, and we're running a keeper down the middle of the field. In this case, we're asking this guy to run that route right there. To do that, we're having the quarterback sell his outside zone again, sell that right there. We're running a stay combination right here with the tight end, and now we're having the quarterback come out, get all the way outside the pocket, and now we're allowing him to pull up and make the throw down the field. All of these throws are throws that we've practiced throughout individual, we practice in our drill work, and now we can see the quarterbacks taking the drill work to the game field. So many big plays in football are made outside of the pocket that it's important that at least once a week that we're practicing some form of a scramble drill. Here what we're doing is we put our skill guys out against our defense, and what we do is we set up our tight ends, wide receivers, and running backs against their linebackers and defensive backs. We call a normal football play, and then as the quarterback reaches the top of the drop and the routes are beginning to develop, the coach stands back there and calls out a direction, whether he calls out right or left. In this picture here, the, co the coach called out left, and when left occurs, everybody on the field should be sprinting left and going to their landmarks. We should have one guy making sure that he works back to the quarterback. We should have one guy taking it high to the back pylon. And in this case here, we should have one guy taking it high to the front goal post and working the end line. Here, the quarterback finds the running back who's releasing immediately upon the left call. A go, go, go call is made if he's planning on running. And otherwise, the tailback is releasing to the sideline, looking for the ball about seven yards. The next example of the scramble drill, similar situation in regards to uh, the, we're down in the red zone, we call a concept, it looks as if everything is covered, now the coach makes a right, right, right call, quarterback takes off right, and now we've got a cluster going on. We should have a guy back here, we should have a guy working back to the ball, we should have a guy working in conjunction with the quarterback, and then we should be having the furthest outside receiver to the left should be working to the far end line. 
Here are the quarterbacks able to pull up and see that this wide receiver finds a way to get open, and next thing you know, you go from scrambling, looking like a broken play, to a touchdown. That's why it has to get practiced on a regular basis. When you work your pocket escape, your pocket presence, and your pocket movement drills, don't forget that you also have to make sure that you are working a scramble drill in order for A, the quarterback to be able to always throw on the run, B, throw off schedule, and then C, recognize that some of the biggest plays in football come when no one's expecting it. Here you can see that we've called the route where three guys are running one direction over here. We've got one guy dragging across the formation. Quarterback it begins on the scramble to the left. With that, we've got great effort by this wide receiver here who's supposed to be sitting down at that goal post initially. He now goes and works with the quarterback. You can see he gets lost in the shuffle, and we wind up throwing a touchdown pass to the back pylon on the left because of the effort that's made by the wide receiver position and because the quarterback understands in the scramble drill, these are the times that you can make your biggest and your best football plays. The scramble drill has got to be used on a regular basis because on the games, in the games on Saturday, Friday, and Sunday, they're used all of the time. It's very important here at the University of Miami that we always talk about scrambling and that scrambling really in every game is your first X play or your explosive play. Here what you'll see is the quarterback doing almost identical to what we just looked at in the drill. He first took his five-step drop, looked downfield, now as he starts scrambling, he keeps his eyes downfield as he sees an open wide receiver show up and it turns into a 65-yard touchdown opportunity, all based upon the fact that we continue to practice working the scramble drill once a week all season long. A good example here from the back, you can see the quarterback taking his drop, eyes downfield, looking to see if he can find anything, can't, okay, turns now, goes to the right, eyes downfield continuously, and then finds the receiver deep down the field. Another example here is with 32 seconds left in a ball game, where uh, we, we really are in a situation here, it's third and 12, the quarterback's looking downfield to see what we can do to, tie the, to go for the lead here in a tie game, scrambles to his right, sees a wide receiver come open deep down the field, releases the ball, and we wind up winning the football game here with a touchdown with about 20 seconds left. You can see the quarterback here is going off of a play action pass. He sees that it's not open where he wants it to be. He now rolls to the right, eyes downfield and lets it fly. And this all from working the scramble drill every day uh, during training camp and then also uh, once a week during the season. Hi, I'm Jed Fish, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach here at the University of Miami. I hope that the drills that we put together for you today uh, will help you and help your players uh, most importantly be safe, but also improve on the fundamentals of the game. Every Monday, we do a ball security circuit of three different drills. The first one we'll talk about today is the human gauntlet drill. In the human gauntlet drill, what we do is we begin by catching the ball thrown uh, from the coach. You can see the coach is going to throw the ball, and immediately the receiver is going to drop, step, and dunk to enter into the gauntlet. We're going to go through twice. The first time we're going to go through, there's going to be one hand on the ball, holding the ball high and tight. And the second, we're going to go through it, we're going to have two hands on the ball, because we're constantly coaching the phrase, to double in trouble. Here you can see him going through with one hand, and here again with one hand. And now as we go through it the second time, you'll see that he's going through with two hands, doubling uh, in trouble. Guys on the bags are trying to knock the ball out and guys are using their hands to rip the ball out. It's a great way to be able to use ball security and to drill ball security uh, every week to make sure we're prepared and ready to go for any game and any defensive player that's trying to rip the ball out. We focus here on never turning the ball over, certainly not to a fumble. The next drill that we're going to do in ball security A is we go through the agiles. Here in the agiles we go through different commands. We first go one foot in, then we go two feet in, then we go double leg hops, and on double leg hops we're using two hands on the ball. Here you can see we're running through it with one and then two feet in. Okay, Again, one foot in, now two feet in, and we're always using our off arm pumping and the ball, uh, we're always holding the ball high and tight 
and the ball that has the arm that has the ball in it is what we would call a dead arm, meaning we're not pumping with that arm. We are also trying to always simulate contact with the bag. Uh, you can see right here with the shield that he's uh, hitting this uh, manager here is hitting our players just to sim simulate some contact and be prepared uh, to always get a hit and to be double in trouble here. You can see they have two hands, two legs jumping into uh, between each agile, and you can see we're able to um, continue to, oh, can't let the ball get knocked out right there and be able to do a great job of holding on to the football and preparing for anything that might come our way. The final drill we use here is the gripper. The gripper in uh, is you. what we're trying to do here. You can see our, our wide receivers are working this drill right now. We have one partner holding the ball while the other tries to tug it out using the gripper device. We keep the ball high and tight. We use all four points of pressure at all times. We hold the ball both on our, our armpit, our forearm, our body, and our hand. We're holding the ball high and tight. We're keeping our index finger on the point of the football. And what we're doing here is we're fighting against the rope. We're trying to let the, the defender pull the rope, and we're ke keeping the point of the football up high and tight against our body to make sure that we never turn the football over after we catch the football to have an explosive catch and run. Drill. The violent sideline drill, you can see right here, is what we're trying to do is we're working on staying in bounds. And not only are we working on staying in bounds, but we're also t worrying about making sure we can coach a good stiff arm, along with always holding the football, keeping the football on our off arm, keeping the ball high and tight, doubling in trouble. You can see right the second man with the uh, shield will be doubling in trouble and always dropping our shoulder. Ball security B with the violent sideline is the first way we start. The second drill we do in ball security B is monkey rolls. Monkey rolls, very similar to what you've done all throughout your lives, is we start with the man in the middle down on the ground. We continuously roll over one another, practicing ball security while hitting the ground where most fumbles occur. We always start with right arm when rolling right and left arm when rolling left. We always tell our guys the ball should be tight to our chest when you go up or down, making sure we never show any air. It's critical that as we're rolling, we're constantly keeping the ball tight into our chest, and we never allow any opportunity for the ball to be punched out or for the ball to slip out as we're going to the ground. This is a drill that's critical as we continue to always fight for extra yardage. The final drill that we do in the ball security B circuit is our hand agile, our one hand agile circuit drill. Here with one arm down in the center of the bags, the ball carrier rotates around the agiles. We tell our receivers, running backs, and tight ends that we should be low to the ground to help train the ball security while falling. Here you can see we're keeping them as low as we possibly can, yet still keeping the ball high and tight to our chest. The elbow should be down with no air on the ball. We do not want to have any room for the, the ball to be punched out or slipped out, similar to the monkey rolls. We're also doing this drill to work on balance. And in the final, uh, the final agile, right before they burst out, we tell them to double in trouble prior to getting that final hit with the shield. The inside hand is the hand that is always down. And what we'll do in this drill is we'll work both ways. Uh, both with our right and our left arm. These are our three uh, ball security B drills. On Tuesdays, we start practice off with a cutting circuit. It's very important for our program for all of the players on our football team to do a great job cutting. It's also important that they understand all the safety aspect of cutting. Here you can see that we begin by taking a small jump set. We try to always maintain inside leverage. We lock out the defender to keep their hands down, and then we shoot for the top of the defender's kneecaps, keeping the eyes up and the pads down. It's very important for us with our offensive linemen that we always are coaching our punch and cut drill because it's an important part 
of our quick game and some other aspects of our passing game and parts of our running game. The next thing that we coach in our cutting circuit is the backside pulling technique. Here, any time we are running any outside runs, runs that are eight or nine hole runs going outside the tackle or tight end area, we're teaching our backside offensive linemen and tight ends to run what we call the backside pulling technique. Here we offset a bag where the cut will occur. We take the first three steps and when we make on the third step we make our decision whether it be a cut or a climb. We position the bag both on and off the line to work both decisions. We explode through the bag landing on our belly and what we ask our players to do is to see how far downfield they could end up keeping their eyes up telling them they always must see what they are cutting. You must make sure that your players keep their eyes up and they get a nice slide all the way through the drill and as far as they can go. We're asking our players to go somewhere between three to five yards after the cut and to finish through the bags. Here they then finish through, they run back to the line and they cut again. We're working our backside pulling technique often to make sure we do a great job on game day. The final drill we work in our cutting circuit is our angle cuts. Our angle cuts, we're working with a bag to the right and to the left and right in front of the player. The first and most important aspect of this drill is we must have a great takeoff. Eyes must stay up to see the target. The next thing we're asking is we want to explode off of your power and plant leg. We finally want to throw our shoulder and forearm through the point of attack while keeping our eyes up. Here you can see the, ball, the bag is placed to the right of the offensive linemen that are running through this drill. And then we point it to the left of the offensive linemen. And then finally we'll have it right in front of them. We'll have our tight ends, our running backs, our wide receivers, and our O linemen all participate in this drill based on the fact that we're cutting both defensive backs, we're cutting linebackers, and we're cutting the defensive line. It's an important part of our program, and therefore we will always commit one day of warm-up to a cutting circuit. At this point in the practice, we feel it's now time to get the quarterbacks to work together with the wide receivers and tight ends and running backs. Here what we're doing is we're having the wide receivers, quarterbacks, and tight ends all get involved in what we call routes on air period. What you would like to do ideally is have five quarterbacks available to you. In this case we had four quarterbacks, one, two, three, and four, so we had to use a coach for number five. Whatever it might be, it gives you a chance to get all five eligible receivers catching the ball every single time. What you'd like to do is start this on the 20-yard line. If for some reason you have to start it outside of the 20, make the point of emphasis the 20-yard burst uh, from the line of scrimmage to the end zone, and uh, or 20 yards here in this case, treat the 15 like the end zone, so every time they're running and catching. We put the stand-up dummies or the cut bags up, in order for them to find windows and throw through windows and make the quarterback have to work a little bit harder, make the wide receiver have to work a little bit harder as well. Here it's set up versus a 3D uh, cover three zone here where both these cut dummies probably should be moving backwards if possible and we'd be able to have this buzz safety coming down. You can see we tell our mesh runners in this picture here that as soon as they rub shoulders to sit down, drop, step, and dunk where we can work this all day long to be able to get vertical as fast as we can. The quarterbacks make a decision based on the read, where each guy is going. They point out their man ahead of time. Here you can see the furthest outside guy is throwing to the furthest outside guy, working across the board. The next number, this quarterback here is throwing to the next guy that's about to come to his side. This quarterback here is throwing to this guy on the closest to his side, this quarterback here is throwing the deeper route on the corner route, and this coach here is reading everything out and then coming to the check wide late. When you're running these concepts, it's so critical for the quarterback's feet to match. As soon as we wind up everybody throwing on different playing fields and we're not throwing in the right sequence is when we have an issue. 
If you're throwing the corner out, you should be throwing it on the plant. If you're throwing the check wide, you should be throwing it on one hitch. If you're throwing it to the short cross coming across in zone coverage, you should be throwing it on two hitches and a, all the way across here, two to two. And then here would be a one hitch, hot throw type thing to the flat. But as you can see, it's a way to get five balls in the air every single time, five different guys going, and then be able to mix and match the formation, the personnel group, and what we're trying to get done in terms of making big time plays. You can obviously do it with all different route concepts here. We've changed the route concept up, no longer running what we would call mesh, and now running what we would call hurricane. Here you can see we're asking guys to sit down in the zone here, sit down in the zone here, telling this guy to treat it like man coverage and this guy to treat it like man coverage, and have your tailback sitting here versus zone. As we go, it gives a chance for all five guys to catch the football, to finish 20 yards down the field, and to make sure that everybody gets and understands every concept. It's a great way to handle concept learning because it allows different guys to fill in, everybody to be alive and catch the ball, and everybody to run their routes. The third concept that we're demonstrating here is a concept we call Chi for 844 in the three-digit system, where we would be running a basic cross, we'd be running a sword route or a deep end cut, with a skinny post or a bang eight. And then we would have a back checking to the flat and a back over the ball. Here, if that's the case, we would have all five guys throwing to these five, with the furthest outside to the left taking care of the tight end here, with number two taking care of the uh, sword, number three taking care of the basic cross, number four taking care of the back on a check through, and then the furthest outside guy to the right would be taking care of the bang eight. We orchestrate the coverages so we would always tell them that the bang eight is the primary read and a three deep look so we would call three deep for that example everybody else would be running the traditional chief this routes on air period is critical to our success critical to the wide receivers ability to finish and then most importantly it gives us an opportunity to practice many plays in a short amount of time with everybody involved catching the football after we stretch the next thing we do is we'll go to a pat and go period when we do our pat and go period, we want our quarterbacks, our wide receivers, our tight ends, and our running backs all to work together to find ways to get loose, to loosen up both the arms and their legs, and most importantly, work on a sequence of catching that they'll have to do come the game. We start our wide receivers, tight ends, and running backs all running slants. The reason why we do that is we want the quarterback, number one, to be able to loosen his arm up, number two, the receivers to work through about it from a 50 to a 75% speed, up to about an 80% speed when it's all over. Plus, you can never throw enough slants. Offenses are built on being able to have some catch and runs, and in order to do that, we're asking our guys to go forward here and make sure that they're catching the ball uh, on all of their three-step slants. The next thing we're doing is we're asking our guys to catch uh, seam routes. Here we tell our guys we're throwing seam routes versus middle of the field close where there's a post-high safety. If there's a post-high safety, whether it be here or here, we're telling our receivers to be staying right here at the top of the numbers. We don't want the quarterback to complete the ball any more than 20 yards down the field. Telling them a ceiling is at 25 yards. So if they complete the ball any more than 25 yards, it's not as good of a rep as we're looking for. Uh, here you can see the quarterback throwing to both tight ends and to wide receivers and to running backs, making sure we, we always get a good rep, always catching the ball, keeping them outside as much as we possibly can at the top of the numbers and working through our progression. After we've gone through the line of slants and then the line of outside seam routes, we move our wide receivers in and we ask our wide receivers to get into what a slot formation would be. Same with their tight ends and our running backs. Here you can see they're in a slot formation, and what we do is we work on cover two benders. We like to throw all go often in this offense, and in order to do that, you have to be prepared and able to throw it against two safeties. With that being said, we ask the wide receivers to push up 10 yards, stick their foot in the ground, and cross the face of the imaginary safety, catching the ball 20 yards uh, towards the uh, goal post. Here you can see on both sides, we're asking our guys to do this. So we never worry about any collision at this case because we're encouraging with off the start. The final phase of the program in Pat and Go is we work on back shoulder throws. When you're throwing back shoulders, it's so critical to be able to throw the line drive ball at the left, at the left back pad right here. 
It's a very hard throw to defend, but yet you don't ever practice it nearly as much. So what we did was we incorporated a back shoulder throw into an everyday part of our world to make sure that we could constantly work on throwing it, catching it, and getting better at it so we can actually make sure that we always are able to uh, run this play against any defense all season long. It's going to be something that we do every day, and it's something we're going to practice and become great at. The reason why we do pat and go every day and rhythm throw is so the quarterback is comfortable making throws of slants, seams, and back shoulder throws. Here you can see an example of the quarterback having on the third and nine calling a slant and being able to practice catching the ball at a shotgun, making the throw on the slant. You can see the wide receiver and the quarterback are both in sync both comfortable with the route and able to convert a third down into a first down. Here you can see the quarterback is now accustomed to making the throw deep down the field and making sure that the wide receiver stays at the top of the numbers. Here if you caught, catch an eye on this wide receiver right here, you can see how that wide receiver is running straight down the field like he wouldn't pat and go, catching the ball over his shoulder. What we're asking the quarterback to do is release the ball off of one hitch, five one hitch and release the ball and that is exactly what we would ask him to do in both his pat and go and his individual work. The reason why we practice so often our rhythm throws is so the quarterback's able to understand that his feet should tell him everything. Here you can see the quarterback taking a five step drop, one hitch and releasing the football trusting the wide receiver will be where he's supposed to be. The next example of our pat and go period is when our quarterback is asked to throw the bender route. The bender in this picture here will come from the tight end position where he will run a seam and at 10 yards he will stick his foot in the ground and head right towards the goal post. Here the quarterback is going to have to throw the ball over the Mike linebacker in between the two safeties. This is a throw that in pat and go these tight ends and wide receivers are accustomed to making on a daily basis uh, and the, the, wide, the quarterback is accustomed to making these type throws. So it's a, both a catch and a throw that we've thrown every single day in pat and go and in rhythm throw and it then permits us to take that play to the game. The next example and the way we end our pat and go period is by throwing back shoulder throws. Here you can see us to the tight end. Quarterback is now throwing the back shoulder high ball to the tight end for a touchdown pass. I think if you don't run a pat and go period every day, you're not accustomed to making these type catches. And sometimes if you're not accustomed to those type catches, they don't happen in the games. Here the quarterback's very comfortable with it. Quarterback knows exactly the footwork he's going to use. The tight end's able to react to the ball and give us a big time play. The final example of the back shoulder throw is the deep back shoulder throw. One that we also practice in our pat and go period. Here the quarterback's laying it out there to the wide receiver's back shoulder. You can see, in this case here, the opportunity is either an over the top and hope that this guy can't dig it out, or a back pad, which is indefensible. Here, as he throws the back pad throw, the, tight, the wide receiver is accustomed to um, reacting to the football, is accustomed to making sure that he can tuck the ball in, and now scoring a touchdown in this situation. The, the quarterback, you can see, is on one hitch delivering the ball to the back pad, making a great throw and catch, and allowing the Miami Hurricanes to score a touchdown. As we know in football, many teams run power or gap plays, where you use gap blocking, which is kind of the opposite of zone blocking. It's in and up away from where the ball is going, where zone blocking is out and up to where the uh, ball is going. And one of the hardest blocks is what we call a deuce. And that's a combination block with the guard and tackle to the side of the call. And and that guy can do a lot of things. That three technique, he could be a two technique, he could be uh, inside shade guy, he could be moving. But, but we want to use constant footwork on these deuce blocks of gap blocking and we want to trust our eyes and our feet to do the same thing and you really so much of this is you have to work these combinations just like we talked about the zone combinations now here here we have a, this would be 17 power and it's the left guard and the, and the left tackle on a combination block and and 
what I don't like is the the, the left guard is kind of drop step in his right foot, but he he still is is given plenty of hit to that three technique, which allows the left tackle to really get involved with that deuce right there. Okay? And now what you want to do, the, why you want the left guard to use forward footwork there is because you, as much as you want to drive the guy down, you want to drive him back also because that kind of takes care of the linebacker. If he has to run the hump, it's going to give us a consistent gain of three or four or five yards. Okay? Uh, that was a pretty good job right there by... Malcolm and Jeremy Lewis, and uh, here's another example. And again, you want the it's in and up with your with your right foot when you're going to the left. Okay, so you so your your inside foot is moving first. Okay, that guy pinches. Here's versus a pitch, and the right the left tackle actually climbs, and he wants to pin the upfield shoulder. Okay, and Malcolm does a decent job of that. And then if that guy tries to hump you and get over the top, now you want to use your backside or right arm and finish him up the field. Okay, but that's a good job by Jeremy in 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 taking the pinching tackle. Good job by Malcolm climbing and pinning the upfield shoulder. Now we got the right side working on the three technique with the left guard pulling. Okay, we got. We were still drop stepping a little too much. That's a better by the right guard, but the right tackle's gotta gotta use forward footwork so you can knock the guy off the ball. And you know, and you're always telling that covered guy, the guard, has to has to look inside because he could get hit by a, a pinching nose guard, a blitzing linebacker, and so he wants to be in and up. Pads down and trust the tackle to get there so he can keep going up the field and get whoever shows. Here's some game footage, and uh, and it's it's a 16 power. It's right guard, right tackle on a three technique. The three wants a play is straight up. It's a pretty good job. You know, the right guard climbs up because the, the backer's not scraping across, and he, and he wants to come right at him, so we'll take him on. And here's, here comes the back. And, oh, man, he sneaks out of there, and it's a bust out. Beautiful. And, and, and you know, I'm not saying that's still, there's a lot of important blocks there, but that deuce block ends up being in, as important as anything on this power. Here's a, here's a backer trying to run through in the A-gap. And, again, what we're talking about is in and up footwork, but your eyes are on, are inside. You know, you got to trust that the tackle next to you is going to fill the void and connect with your hip while you're while you're looking at any a gap run throughs, and he picks it off perfect, and we get a we get a nice pull, and and he shoots right through there. You know, we probably could have done a better job on that outside end, but it's a nice five yard gain, four yard gain. Here we got another sixteen power right guard. Right tackle on the deuce. I think the right tackle's turning too much. You want to stay square. But he's using good footwork. He has good awareness of that linebacker. And he gets lucky and flushes him up. It's a great job by the right guard taking the three technique when he comes inside. The back kind of hesitates a little there. and he, If he hadn't hesitated, he might have got through there. And look at the job by the puller knocking that guy down. But it's a real good job on the deuce.